Welcome to the Bayesian Conspiracy. I am Inyash Brodsky. I am Steven Zuber. I am Jay Sticky. Good morning and, and hello, everybody. Yeah, welcome to the new year. Or oh, yeah. continuation of the old year, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming along. Yes. On the plus side. All right, you know what? Because it has been a weird week. We rescheduled what we're going to talk about. Um, I, I figured because it's been a rough week, we should start with happy news. Happy news, Georgia flipped blue, which is kind of cool. Oh, oh, yeah. I took two weeks off for the holiday. Uh, helped do some mock interviews for recent grads of Skill Distillery. One of the people who I did mock interviews with, the one who listens to this podcast, is going to land a high-paying job, in, I think, probably before this episode airs. If Oh, wait, this comes out in a couple days. I'm going to say before the end of the month, 100, I'll, I'll bet Same. 120 bucks. Does that person listen to this podcast? Yep. <laughs> oh, cool. Congratulations to this person. Yeah, yeah. Go, go that person. We all know it's gray. <laughs> oh, I did not actually know it was gray. <laughs> I um, wasn't sure if I mean I was pretty sure. Uh, yeah, I mean it was it's like it was it was hilarious because I was I think he was my middle interview, and you know like the other ones were exactly what I'd expect from boot camp grads. You know, uh, vaguely able to talk about what they learned, um, able to do. Which is which is expected. It goes way too fast for them to have, you know, an operative understanding of everything. Which is why one of my like uh, crib notes is basically just say, "All right, look, have your resume that you sent to them, and then have your longer version that you look at when you're interviewing on the phone that has definitions of all the things in your resume." <laughs> um, <Yep. laughs> and then l- listening to Gray, he's explaining it to me like my, you know, my mid my mid tier slash like upper mid tier colleagues would would explain their stuff. I'm like, okay, yeah, you're fine. There's I've got nothing to teach you. When, so when, as soon, as, soon like- as you get through and talk to anybody like like that's not a recruiter and on like the the engineering side you're going to get offers. Like it's just going to be a matter of applying to enough stuff to where somebody will respond to your, you know, or give you a call. I think he applied for a few things and then like was depressed like a few days later that he hadn't heard back. And I was just like, you know, it takes like, like job search. I think I heard somewhere it's like an average of what like, two, three months. I think yeah, that's probably faster in the software industry. Maybe, but it, it effort, it's I about the same think, probably dude, for you your gotta, first job. You but gotta like, wait. Yeah, well, and for them too, they graduated like the third week of December. Yeah. So, like, you know, no one's going to be calling them back, you know, in 2020. Oh, yeah. So, and then also, in, you know, like, I don't know if, if how true this is about everywhere, but generally people don't like doing work and interviewing uh, new recruits is work. So, often it gets pushed off for, you know, several weeks. At least this, this has been the case in my job that, like, unless we are desperate for someone that we really need to get an ASAP, it's like, okay, how I'll, I'll interview these people next week and stuff. So, it, it gets pushed off. Yeah. And there's like onboarding and. Well, he's had interviews and stuff. So, that's all coming together faster than the average. So, cool. Anyway, props to you, dude. Um, what else? What else is going on? Uh, so this was this might be a good. I'll let you guys get out any happy news before I talk about my Wednesday and then the country's Wednesday. Um, also, we're doing the uh, less wrong posts first. Still, yes, I forgot. We're yeah, so we've got to do the the posts. But well, I I still have my segue, so I'll, I'll lead it in. But yeah. um, anyway, what are your, what's your guys' happy news? It's been a while since we sat down to talk since the uh, what second week of December. Yeah, it's been a while. It has been. What have you guys uh, been up to? Let's see. Um, Jace, you want to start? I'm, you know, doing my programming boot camp uh, practicum and not a lot else. Uh, I, I've been playing D&D, which has been pretty awesome. I have been getting back into writing slowly. I finally completed a draft of a new short story, and now I'm waffling as to whether I should do one more short story or start in on my second novel. Um, got, you know, I, I'm, I find myself playing a lot of video games lately and I realize just how much time they take up. Like during mm-hmm. my, uh, mid late thirties, when I was super productive and writing and doing the HPMR podcast and everything, like one of the keys to my success is I basically didn't play video games anymore. Sometimes in the evenings for an hour or two, but like most of my day was spent doing other stuff. And now that I'm playing video games again, I'm like, holy shit, no wonder I don't have time for things. This, this takes up <laughs> a lot of my time. It's a long 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 fun. What uh, no, fun. no. The video game fun is very temporary. It, it you know, lasts for the evening and then it goes away. Whereas making the HPMR podcast fun is something that lasts like, I mean, people still 
write to me and like, this thing is amazing. You have helped make my life for the better. I'm like, ah, that was a thing I did years ago. And yet it's still paying dividends. The gift that keeps giving. Yeah. As opposed to like that boss that I killed three years ago. I don't remember that. No one else remembers that. Who but cares? it was a thrilling fight. I suppose. Maybe I'm just justifying my video game playing habits. I go month, I go like on months where I don't play and then months where I play a lot. Yeah. Um, there are some Christmas deals. The wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What other game do you need? Well, I really just the wild I'm, too. I'm replaying a video game that's 15 years old, so. What are you playing? <laughs> World of Warcraft. Oh, yeah, yeah. Think. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, uh, you're socializing with people, right? I, that's the hard part. Like, if I were to quit playing this game, I would stop hanging out with those people. And, like, that part, just thinking about it, makes me kind of sad and anxious because I really like those people. You. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't want to quit hanging out with them. It's a social experience. I think you're getting more out of it than you're giving yourself credit for. What I really should have done is, like, rounded up all my Meat Space friends here, and especially the, like, the Denver Rationalist community, and sucked all them into World of Warcraft. That's not too late. I think you, you extended the offer back when the game was being announced, and I told you that I didn't think I could handle that and a job at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, I don't have no the, one wanted I don't to have play a 15-year-old game. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's just that, I like, so when I graduated high school... I think I got like an eight-day demo of World of Warcraft, and I was like, okay, I know myself. Do I want to go to college or want to play World of Warcraft? Because I can't do both. <laughs> I, I'll be the one yeah. who stays up till three in the morning. I mean, like, okay, yep, if I play, if I finish this, I can stop at three, get four hours of sleep, play another hour, and then go to class. Like, I'm like, nah, that's not sustainable. I'll die. So, <laughs> can, can, can I give you like a amazing thing I have discovered over the past year of playing? Yes. Uh, you, you know how like drugs nowadays are much more potent like the weed that you can get in a colorado dispensary is like 12 times the potency and purity of the shit that people were smoking in the 60s that's and, what i hear yeah and like nobody knows this and unless every now and then an old person who used to smoke in the 60s try some and gets knocked flat on their ass and they're like holy fuck what's going on the same thing happened to video games like that shit was extremely addictive at the time it came out because it was the only thing going that was the best thing. And yeah, people did lose their lives over it. I knew a guy who dropped out of college due to have a crack. Um, but like now that you play it and you compare it to modern video games, you're like, this, you know, this is all right. It's it's a fun enough game, but it is it is not nearly as addictive as the modern stuff is. And like we've just kind of developed antibodies and resistances to it, where <laughs> like it's still addictive the same way 60s weed is still addictive, but it's not nearly as bad. I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I think that they've mastered the surface stimulus more on like newer video games. But I just remembered like I'd played I think in a year or less, I'd put like four hundred and fifty hours into Elder Scrolls Oblivion, which has none of the online component like competitiveness that World of Warcraft has. And so then again that was Steven, you know, twelve years ago. Maybe now I'd do a little better. So Yeah. No, that, I mean, just the old World of Warcraft game, the game part of it itself is just objectively less good than the current uh, games that are out. And current retail Warcraft is much better in terms of, like, minute-by-minute minute play. Uh, it, it's just not a great game, all things considered, but it is, it's more than the game. Like, the both the social aspects and the overarching, like, logistics of trying to get a raid completed is... That, that feels like the real game. And that's not like pushing buttons and knowing what spells to use when. That's like actual yeah, just human game. stuff. Yeah, that's the fun part. And I was addicted to MMOs for six years. I was in college at the time, and I think I mostly just sacrificed sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I did that too. I but... a few times, at, like, until sunrise, and then, like, had to go to school. <laughs> I mean, I almost died a couple times in car accidents due to my sleep sacrificing, so that oh, was God. a bad idea. <laughs> Yeah, like so you guys are more functional than me. If you guys almost died, I definitely will die. So, yep. I, I actually woke up on the uh, oncoming traffic side of the road oh one my time. God. Yeah, but I mean, there was no oncoming traffic, so it was fine ish, but still really scary to wake up. Very like, fine, well, yeah. You know. Yeah, waking up in motion is probably not something that uh, fails to, you know, send a, an important message to you. Yeah. Well, cool. I, I'm, I'm glad you're writing again, too. If you ever need a, a dummy reader who doesn't. You know, who's not uh, an articulate reviewer to re read your stuff? Uh, send me anything you got. Sure. Yeah. And Jace is crushing it. Programming boot camp. Everyone's winning at stuff. This is great. <laughs> so that sounds like you're gearing up for a segue. 
It, it almost did, but if we're going to do those wrong posts, I can wait. But uh, speaking of winning, we're going to talk about Wednesday uh, after we talk about what is evidence filtered evidence. Yes. And what is evidence filtered evidence? In a sentence, I'm going to just summarize yeah, that this is like if you're going to do really formal Bayesianism, this is kind of like. To me, I don't need to articulate the points in my head, or at least that's my understanding of it. I don't need to articulate the points made in this post like uh, formally to intuitively understand and implement them already. Um, mm -hmm. But if you're looking for, for formalisms, this is a good, uh, or I guess semi-formalisms. There's not that much math in this, so um, I think this this post like it's I think it's pretty intuitive, but it's also extremely applicable, like much more nowadays than it was before because. Basically, all the news we get everywhere is extremely filtered, and uh, and that is that has many applications to the modern day. Uh, let I don't know. Let, let me let me touch on this real quick. The what evidence filtered evidence post. Uh, he harkens back again to his dilemma about the clever arguer that he set out in an earlier post, where um, someone is hired to sell you a box that may or may not contain a diamond, and the clever arguer points out, uh, for example, the box uh, box has a blue stamp. And it is a well-known fact that diamond-containing boxes are more likely to have a blue stamp. Um, and at that point, like, what do you do from a Bayesian perspective? Because that is true evidence. Like, stamp-containing boxes are much more likely to have diamonds. And as a Bayesian, you should update your probabilities on true, uh, true facts like that. But on the other hand, you know this is a clever arguer who will only tell you things that are in support of the box having the diamond and will not tell you about any other evidence. So are you supposed to not update on actual true evidence that exists? Like, what the hell do you do here? Yeah, basically, this, this is the dilemma of what do you do when, you're, when you know you're interacting with a biased source? Yeah. And so, like, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the conclusion is basically you don't Really, you're not obligated to do anything as a proper Bayesian until you've checked that against other sources, yes. or like you, you know, ex you, you know the rest of the relevant data. He gives the example of like, all right, I've got a biased coin, Enyash and Jace. It's either two thirds biased heads or two thirds biased tails. And I flip ten times, and I tell you that on the fourth flip, the sixth flip, and the ninth flip, it came up heads. What is your posterior probability that the coin is heads based? Well, the answer mm. is. Fuck you, right? Yeah. If, I mean, if you had made a pre-commitment to always report the fourth, sixth, and ninth flips regardless, then this is a good evidence that it is, in fact, heads-based. But if your commitment yeah. is to only report the flips that come up heads, then this is actually evidence that it's tails-based, because that would mean that all the other flips were tails. And if you don't know which way I pre-committed to, it means that yeah. you can't make a, an informed update. Yeah. So, I, Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, well, I was going to say that it's really cool. At this point, he brings up the Monty Hall problem again, uh, which for people who don't know, there was an old game show where there's three doors, the contestant picks a door, and uh, behind one of the doors is $10,000, and the other two are empty. And then the host goes and opens one of the other two doors, and the door that the host opens will always be one of the empty ones. And the question is then, uh, should the guests switch doors, or should the guests stay on the door that they already picked before? And... Uh, the intuitive answer is it doesn't matter because they got a 50-50 shot. The actual correct answer is they should always switch doors because then they will get it two-thirds of the time. And the reason for that is exactly because of this, uh, because the host is a biased source. And at, like the biased source that will only report on heads, you know that the other seven flips are tails, so it's actually biased tails. Um, it, this is the same kind of thing where uh, you... The fact that the host opened that door changes the probabilities, and you should switch doors. Right, and like it's some, sometimes, and at least for me at the beginning when I first heard this like a decade ago, it wasn't intuitive. Oh, um, not at all. There but, are so many arguments about this thing. Well, I think for me, what really settled it is like, all right, picture a thousand doors, and you know, behind one of them contains ten thousand dollars, the rest contain nothing. So I pick, you know, door one hundred. The host opens all the other doors except one. And they're all empty. I'm like, okay, well, what are the odds that the one I picked had the had the the ten thousand dollars? It was one in a thousand. But now that I know all the other doors are empty, uh, I mean, it it, it seems to now indicate 50, that the one 50, didn't 50, open. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, so it's it's a it's a much better chance that um it's the the new door. So yeah, uh, or the remaining door rather. Um, You'd there's be an admonition not here. To switch. Right. There's a there's an admonition here not to use the evidence filtering as a fully general counter argument like we've talked about before that's just like the 
the the tool you can whip out, uh, well, the inappropriate tool you can whip out and say, ah, I notice you're biased. I get to disregard what you're saying. Um, like that's not how this works. That's not really any. And so the, the, this isn't the only fully general counter argument, but the, those sorts of things are things you have to be careful of, lest you find just enough tools to never change your mind. Um, I, I like what he says here. Do you mind if I quote it exactly? Yes. You do mind? I'm kidding. Go. Yeah, I, oh, yeah, okay. I know. I'm joking. Come on. <laughs> so, okay. All right. I don't know. Maybe you're like, oh, man, I was trying to get through this now. You know, I should slow oh, this right, down you're again. Good. SOB. Okay. So, uh, yeah, he's, he's saying people will say that argument was filtered. Therefore, I can ignore it. Um, what he says is, if you're ticked off by a contrary argument, then you are familiar with the case and care enough to take sides. You probably already know your own side's strongest arguments. You have no reason to infer from a contrary argument the existence of new favorable signs and portents which you have not yet seen. So you're left with the uncomfortable facts themselves. So, you know, yeah, the other side's argument is filtered, but you already have all the filtered pro arguments. So don't just discount the other side. Right. And, you know, man, this sounds kind of appropriate for now, right now, doesn't it? Um, yes. But yeah, I mean, it, it's just the idea that, like, I I think everyone knows this on some level. You know, you go to a used car car lot, you know the car salesman's trying to sell you a car, and they're not going to talk down the car that they're selling you. They're going to talk it up if they think you might buy it. They're not, they're not going to tell you all the reasons you shouldn't buy it. So that's why you listen to their spiel, and then you go to your phone and Google the make and model and see if there's any, you know, common problems with this vehicle. I think like, people know that just because they've been told it so many times, though. Like, people still trust a lot of their own uh, media sources, even though that is the worst person to trust, as they have the most filters. Oh, that's what I'm saying, is that people people know about this this uh, this problem in certain areas. The, the, the technique is applying it broadly. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're just leaving yourself open to be manipulated by used car salespeople. Jeez, you're saying? Oh, I thought you had something. No, I was just making it. I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry about it. I, I do love the dig he gets in on creationism at the very end. Because lest we forget, this was written back in the uh, mid-2000s when uh, creationism and, and the religion debates were still sort of a thing. Uh, yeah, that was like during the, what was it, the heyday of like new atheism. Yeah, or at least on the tail end of the new atheism okay, thing. Yeah. It was still strong. Maybe it was still the heyday. Eh, don't recall now. It exactly. was the tail end of it, I think. But because this was like what 2010 ish. Uh, uh, we can actually look at the date. I thought it was 2007. It's 2007. Okay. Oh yeah, right in the middle then. Yeah. Yeah. Then everyone moved on to more important things to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he says if it's the first time you're ever hearing something, you should be beware. Uh, and no one can really trust the theory of natural selection if they if they're just hearing it for the first time until they've listened to creationist for. Five minutes. Then you know it's solid. <laughs> Which was great. It's fun. Yeah. And then the next post was uh, rationalization, which uh, to me, I just always like this because it has the very memorable, uh, it, it makes a very memorable point that like rationalization is like calling lying truthization. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it seems so weird that like, because it's the, it, it's basically uh, top bottom line thinking, right? And yeah. so, you're reasoning backwards so that you can find evidence to support your position. And that's what they call rationalization. And that's not like close to what rationality is, the root of rationalization uh, or the root word of. And so it's, it bears as much a resemblance as lying does to telling the truth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That the curious inquirer writes down all the signs and importance on the box and that's rationality. Whereas the clever arguer first writes down box B contains a diamond, then goes looking for evidence, and that's known as rationalization. And basically, the entire post is saying, "This is a stupid word. I hate this word. Why did they make such a stupid word that sounds just like rationality when it's the exact opposite?" Yeah. Uh, can I pull a quote? Yes. To improve our beliefs, we must necessarily change our beliefs. Rationality is the operation we use to obtain more accuracy for our beliefs by changing them. Rationalization operates to fix beliefs in place. It would better be named anti-rationality, both for yep. its pragmatic results and for its reversed algorithm. Yeah. Yeah, on that reversed algorithm thing, that's a thing he touched on a couple times in that post, so I figure we should probably mention it. Maybe it'll come back in the future. He says a few times that rationality is the forward flow that gathers evidence, weighs it, and then outputs a conclusion, whereas rationalization is a backwards flow from conclusion to selecting evidence. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, like, and it's easy enough to rationalize. Uh, you know, like I, I almost had an example of this last week, and then uh, there's a couple. I mean, that's what I like about this is you don't have to be a you know perfect Bayesian in a box. Like you can you can put your uh, your confusion out to trusted sources, and then like heavily update on that and just throw out what you were trying to rationalize yourself into. And this is a very modest example. I bought some uh, ground up turkey meat that I had in the freezer for, I don't know, a couple, three weeks. And it says use or freeze by a date that was a few days past. Um, but it had been in the freezer for a few weeks. Right. right. Yeah. And yet it looked kind of gray, like a, a patch of it on the top. Right, like, that's not oxidization. That, that's what? That's oxidization. Like so when it the apple turns a little bit of brown. Yeah, yeah, it's still good. Oh, well, I threw it out because like it wasn't the healthy looking pink that I'm used to seeing. So um, uh, okay. I was trying to talk myself into using it because I, I was really looking forward to eating it. And it didn't smell like anything in particular. And I'm like, okay, oh. well, you know, you know it, it, it seems like it should be fine. Um, and then my wife, like, as I was showing her, I was like, all right, like, what, what should I do here? She's like, well, you know, if we're not sure, let's just toss it out. You know, it's only like $4. I'm like, yeah, all right, that's, that's fair. Um, yeah, so I was, I was trying to water. rationalize myself into eating the thing I wanted to eat, knowing that it that I had a non-negligible uh, probability that it might be poisonous. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but now true. I have new evidence that that just means that it's oxidized for some reason. Like even though it's in an airtight container that was just in the freezer. Yeah, the little bit of air that got stuck in with the packaging. Very some well. Stuff well, change color when it freezes, but yeah, like it's probably a good heuristic if you're if in doubt, throw it out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you took the safe option, definitely. Well, but now that I know if it's just a, a smidgling gray, I can still eat it. I'll try that. And if I get poisoned, I'll complain to you. Okay. You might be able just to cut off that little gray part. I thought about that. And yet, like, I had this before where, like, a few years ago, I had, like, a thing of bagels. And, like, only the bottom bagel had mold on it. But I'm like, I'm not going to eat, like, the top two bagels that are left just if I remove them from the thing that has mold. Because, like, there's no way that the mold hasn't moved through the whole thing. It just hasn't grown a colony on these two, two bagels oh, yeah. yet. Right. Mold sends, like, little roots through your yeah. bread yeah i wasn't about to well, th these were these were distinct bagels they were what but they were distinct bagels but like i they, they were still in the same container bagels. oh okay like they were in discrete containers no no they were they were in one sleeve but they were they were like they weren't one piece of bread you know they were yeah. uh, no, I, I so like uh, sorry that was i just, just confusing. no you're good Excuse i just didn't, i just didn't want to fuck with it yeah so um anyway the main thing I know about mold is that it'll turn your bagels into bagel eating monstrosities, and you want to put them down fast. <laughs> but with Sounds cheese, right. you can cut a moldy part off of, I think, most cheeses and continue with the rest because it doesn't send the little roots through it. It's just got the one spot. Cheese is like mold. Cheese is anyway. weird for lots of reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Cheese basically is mold anyway. <laughs> exactly. It's like, here, this is like the sticky stuff that you get when you let cow juice sit out for too long. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, not a good sales pitch. So the first person to eat cheese must have been really hungry. I, that's probably the case for pretty much everything that anyone's eaten for the yeah, first time. We humans make a lot of weird, like, fermented foods. Uh, actually, speaking of Greg, I went and really c cooked food at his place, and I, he asked if I could stop at the Spanish market and get maranga sausage, which is this, like, gross-looking blood sausage. And I was just like, I wonder, like, what was going on in the head of like the first human that was like, Hey, I think, you know, it would be cool. Let's get some blood and awful and like wrap it up in some intestine and then just leave it for, for a while. What they were probably thinking is like, Oh God, here's some food I wrapped up and left for a while. But if I don't eat something, I'm going to die soon. Yeah. <laughs> have you, well, speaking of that, have you guys ever tried nature balls? Uh, that's not the actual term. It's what I call. I was going to say, like, if I was feeling more awake, I would have thought of a great joke to throw in there, but no. <laughs> it's what I call like little berries and just brightly called colored balls that you find out in nature growing on bushes. Like I, I oftentimes when I'm out hiking, I'll, there's you know little nature balls on 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 bushes and stuff, and I'll pick them. You're just eating random berries. Yeah, I mean, I don't eat it. I take it and I put it in my mouth and just kind of break one or two with my teeth and I taste it. And if it's bad, I spit it out. And if it's good, I also spit it out. But like, I think this is the process for like finding what things you can eat. You just try a tiny bit. And if it's bad, you stop. And if it's not bad, maybe you swallow, but you wait like a day afterwards to see if you get sick and eh, you experiment from there. There's probably a procedure for this thing. Don't. Yeah. Like that. that's the, <laughs> some berries are poisonous. 
Yeah, I know, but I figure like a two hundred pound person, if you eat one berry, yeah, it I might mean, make you sick, but it's not gonna kill you. And just then when you get sick, you know not to eat it. Just don't do that with the mushrooms. Are mushrooms extremely poisonous in Mush- tiny doses? Many kinds of mushrooms are that there's like a mushroom called death cap. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I've heard of the death cap mushroom. That is a bad one. There's- because you identify one on site. Mm, oh, I, I just don't put mushrooms in my mouth unless I exactly. bought them from a dealer. Smart. <laughs> or <laughs> I mean, a grocery store. A dealer of food or of, of <laughs> drugs, yes. <laughs> All right. I don't have much else to add on this one, but we do have to say that next week we're doing a rational argument. We change our minds less often than we think and avoiding your beliefs real weak points, which I can already remember is one of my favorites. Cool. And there are three because the first two are really short. So I figured let's just get three in so we have something to talk about. Sounds like a plan to me. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. Okay. <laughs> Moving on to everyone's fun week. So, yeah. Wednesday morning. Uh, this is always a fun thing. I'm not sure if this ever happens at your guys' jobs. You ever get like a company-wide notice? Be like, hey, in an hour and a half, we're having a company-wide meeting. Um, I am trying to think. And in my two years at this job, that's never been good news. Um, yeah. They never hold emergency meetings for good news, right? So right. I was thinking, oh, shit, like more essential people are quitting. Um, no, it's actually way different than that. So the like my my company was acquired in like October of 2018. It made no difference to the company up until like maybe a year later when the parent company started actually doing stuff. Um, and then in, let's see, the pandemic hit, tanked our numbers, and they announced in September that they were sunsetting our, our product. And so like all the salespeople were let go that day, almost all the support people were let let go and all the engineers weren't because we were all going to be offered lifeboats to stay with the parent company. Um, The job was basically going to be just maintain the product, keep it running for another year and then then dump it. Um, So Wednesday they announced, hey, somebody bought the product. So uh, five of you guys are going to go work for this new company, uh, completely different from the company that's currently signing your checks. And you'll, you know, you guys get a choice, but you'll get offer letters and stuff. It's a whole new job, but you're not being fired. Um, so this is like very different from where I thought this episode was going. Well, it was just weird because, so there, there's two things with that. One, I'm not a business person, but if I'm looking for someone to buy something, I don't tell all my customers, Hey, we're quitting. We're not, we're not re-upping your contracts. We're not, we're not soliciting new customers. Um, I, first go look and see if someone will buy the product and then when everyone says no then i then i announced that we're, we're shutting it down right okay so instead what they did is i kind of fuck everybody and completely fuck like our our user base by saying yep we're, we're shutting this down everyone get ready to jump ship and then they went and sold it so that'll be weird but mm-hmm. the only thing is like for the last month we've been uh like planning out the next several months worth of work and we're building like this dope ass thing on bleeding edge technology that now I'm being told, hey, you know what? You get to go keep working on this product instead, which is fine. It's not a big deal, but it's just like it was weird. Uh, so and then, the... never mind, keep going. Yeah, no, I'm just I'm I'm gonna keep maintaining the product that I initially started this company working on. But the the scary part is that then I also learned that the like the most senior dev in the company who only had like another year and a half above me, um because literally every other engineer has left. Uh, he's also leaving. Yesterday was his last day. So that makes me the most senior developer working on this product when he moved to the next company. And this is going to suck. So <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, How do you feel about that? But I think he just answered. Yeah, it, I mean, it has its pros and cons. Um, but we'll see how it all shakes out. Do you get fat sacks of dollars for it, though? Do what? Do you get fat sacks of dollars for it? Well, so that's the thing is I haven't received an offer letter yet. <laughs> I, I, have, I haven't received an offer letter yet from the new company, but I'm going to demand a fat sack of cash because I am like, in fact, everybody who's been moved over is business critical. Like they just spent, I'm assuming tens of millions of dollars on this product and, or I'm guessing several millions. I have no idea what it actually sold for, some large but amount. So, some, some gigantic amount of money. And like, if we were just to give them the pro- like give them the code and say, good luck, they'd be completely fucked. We we are worth a fortune to help with the transition to make this actually a product for them and not just a, a spaghetti mess of code. So um, I think I think we all are in a position where we're very well poised to roughly negotiate or not not uh, harshly negotiate um, very competitive salaries. So that's cool. Um, that so good. then yeah, so that happened at like ten thirty up until like about one o'clock. We had like meetings about that. And then, like, talked about what this meant for, like, the work we were going to be doing going forward. And then it was just me and two of the people who are being 
horse traded to this new company talking about like what all this meant and how we felt about it and stuff and whether or not we're going to quit. Um, and then we had a, a thing at two that we were going to jump on and, and all, it was like a tech demo for something that one of the people was working on. And I was skimming through something, reading the news or, uh, while eating lunch. And then somebody, Oh, uh, Matt messaged me and said, Hey, yeah, there's a firefight opened at the Capitol. I'm like, wait, what? Um, mm -hmm. so I found a live feed on the guardians website. Um, and it was just being updated every few minutes from like tweets from sen or from, from senators inside the building, uh, messages from, um, like, what do you call it? Uh, media people, um, photographers and that stuff. And so I'm watching this whole thing unfold for like an hour, just sitting there before <laughs> like this meeting to like, try and just like, all right, cool. Let's, uh, let's all change gears and talk about this cool thing I put together. Um, the one house so, is under attack, but don't worry about it. Let's get yeah, the, the, the Senate started. chamber. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so, so everybody knows what we're talking about. Um, on Wednesday during the, the confirmation for uh, the election results, there were initially protesters, soon to be rioters. Um, you know, it's it's one thing to stand outside and wave signs. Some of these signs are rather creepy and weird. Um, some of the flags are not uh, patriotic, to put it lightly. <laughs> um, but yeah, then, then it quickly escalated to, well, and the escalation part, there's probably plenty to unpack there. Um, you know, parts of it were them shoving the way past barriers. Other parts were cops moving barriers, waving them through and taking selfies, um, which I don't quite understand. Uh, so, I yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not summarizing this well. Because I, I, I'm just summarizing how my day felt with it. It was so surreal. Like, I was already having a weird morning. And then I'm watching this go down and I'm like, is this real life? It's like, what is such a weird year that, like, I kind of saw that and I was like, yeah, that might as well happen. Yeah, right. Seems right. Seems like a fitting end to, or maybe it's not the end of the whole debacle. Well, uh, hopefully, I guess we'll see. I mean, so yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not doing a good job summarizing it, just kind of giving my own stream of consciousness on it. So like, you know, I I had heard a report that someone died. It took like three hours for the National Guard to get there. So I mean, so protesters made it inside the building. Um, the the Senate was evacuated. You know, Pence was ushered out immediately with the Secret Service guarding him, and. Uh, you know, people were like hiding under chairs and behind uh, podiums and shit. And like, I, I think it doesn't do it justice to say some protesters got inside the building. Like some, right? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm some not articulating violent as well. Riders rushed the barricades, overwhelmed the police. Apparently, beat one of them to death with fire extinguishers. That sucks. Uh, and then broke windows and kicked in doors and forced their way into the Capitol building. And fortunately, everyone important was evacuated in time. And I believe the guards inside shot one of the people rushing them, a uh, yeah. lady who later died in the hospital. I saw the video of that. Um, it's it's not safe for life. I mean, you don't get to see her die, but you see her get shot. Yeah. Like, it's the final barricade behind which the, you know, the, the elected officials are hiding in rooms. And there's like a hallway be behind this doorway. And they've got like chairs and desks and guards on, on the, you know, the reverse side of it holding the holding the guard. And like, uh, they, the protesters break a window, this cop's standing there with a gun saying, you know, you can, you can tell that they're shouting, but you can't hear it over the pandemonium. And then gunshot, and the person falls back because the person was climbing through the window that they'd shattered. And it's like, well, no shit, you're going to get shot. Like, yeah. you know, it, nobody likes police violence, et cetera. But this, this is like exactly what you want cops for. Yeah, so that's like, kind of like, that's what they do, ideally. Yeah. What, what they don't do, and, and that's why like... <laughs> And, and, and Inyash's summary is is closer to accurate than the one I was giving, but like the, the thing that's weird about it is, I mean, you can see videos of them moving barricades and literally just waving protest. They were at this point they were like protesters, whatever rioters, soon to be rioters through. And then when they're inside the building, you see cops taking selfies with them. There's videos of this. It's so weird. Yeah. Like half half the cops weren't doing shit. I don't I don't know what the numbers numbers were. I'm not sure if half is right, but enough were just completely complacent and. Like these these nut jobs, you know, scaled the sides of the building. Couple fell and died. Um, they 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 took down the American flag and hung up a, a Trump flag. Um, it it was like to me the the weird part was like this is a group of unorganized ridiculous lunatics, and they had presumably a super easy job of doing this. If if you'd had two dozen people, well, I guess what helped was the size of the crowd. But if you were there with the crowd and you were there with two dozen like highly coordinated individuals, you could have gotten some shit done, right? 
Oh yeah, like the thing is, you you I've you see these movies like a uh, White Olympus Fallen or White House Down or whatever they are, and there's always like this super trained elite cartel of foreign or uh, foreign agents or um, or well trained like uh, organized criminal people, and they have like Gatling guns and helicopters and like all this shit to break in, and all it really took was like a whole bunch of people with clubs yeah <laughs> yeah they're just like yep yep rushing this place and i was like wow i yeah. this, this made for the least exciting capital takeover movie i've ever seen i kind of had i don't know it's it's like i thought that they had better security like that well, yeah like, it, apparently it had been that like yeah like what you were saying that it would be actually difficult to do such a thing Apparently, security is really good as long as they prepare. Like when uh, BLM marched on the Lincoln Memorial, there was like tons of National Guard out front, standing and you know waiting. And uh, with the for the Capitol protests, they they told the National Guard not to come in. Uh, they just had a few of the Capitol police there because, well, I mean, honestly, I think it's because they. Uh, they treat right wing protests with a lot of deference that that the entire law enforcement community sees them as an in group and so you know they don't think they're going to get attacked by them and uh maybe maybe this will wake up some people to to realize that right wing mm. protesters can be violent murderous lunatics too <laughs> yeah yeah there's there's a five thirty eight article that summarizes uh that left wing protests are about twice as likely to be shut down by the police than right wing protests. Yeah, because well, uh, like the left vi- wing is like the suppressed. other side, whereas the right wing is our guys, and we don't got to worry about our guys. They're good guys. Well, it's a good thing that you know all this rationality nonsense. Like <laughs> we've been worried about people not having good like thought processes, but it, you know what? Like it's good to know that the world is fine and nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, I'm glad that the people that were there are so bad at rationality that they were disorganized and incompetent and couldn't do anything when they got in the building. Didn't like that's, that's my thing. Is imagine, like I said, if some of them were coordinated, it would have been. It, this could have been insanely worse. Someone could have stolen the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> then they right. would have found the map on the back of it. Ah. Uh. Yeah, I, I mean, I, you would think that you think that breaking into Nancy Pelosi's office during a Senate Senate congregation would actually be really hard, but it turns out no, it's actually super easy, barely an inconvenience. <laughs> you, you get you get a thousand mobsters to, to rush the building with you, and then you get to just walk in and put your feet up on her desk. Yeah. Like it, it's madness. Um, it you know, there's been I don't know on the at this date, I think something like sixty people arrested. Um, I don't even know how they got all out of the building. You think that all would have been you know by the non-complacent officers you think they'd all have been shut down immediately, but I don't quite get what happened on the inside. I'll I'm looking forward to watching the documentary in a month of what the fuck happened in there. Uh, <laughs> That's what it'll be titled. What, what the, the fuck, fuck happened, happened in there? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was weird. Um, to me, the most interesting part was like what happened once the people got inside. And I think I want to talk about this more a little bit later, but first, like let's just talk about the fact that once they got in, People didn't know what to do. It was like, I believe movie Bob said they got in the Capitol and they expected for the uh, the quest to be completed. <laughs> and the level's over. Congrats, you know? Oh, and so, do I get yeah. experience? <laughs> and yes. And after that, people just kind of milled around and took selfies. And it, it almost turned into like a, a music festival party, you know, where people were just like, hey, let's, let's wander around and see this place because no one really knew what to do at that point. Yeah, that was it, the bizarre, surreal thing. Just seeing people wandering through like this was, you know, an exhibit somewhere in Coachella or Burning Man or something. That was the weirdest part. Like you said, it would have been one thing if they if they ran in and they had carefully placed napalm to like burn the building down or something. But no, like they just got in and they're milling around for hours. Yeah, like just well, we did it. High five. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we we five. did it. We saved the we saved our democracy. <laughs> the nation <laughs> is secure. <laughs> and so that, that's something that like when I was watching this unfold. I was kind of just sitting there, like just taking it in for like the first hour. And then I was like trying to like actually process it. And like, it's not hard to put yourself in the heads of these people and say, okay, yeah, I totally get what they were doing. Like it, it's, it's much how I could imagine people would react if say this went down, if say the day didn't have the Trump protesters break in and Pence had said, you know what? I reject your reality and substitute my own. Donald Trump won this election. And like, 
stamped the paper and, and disagreed with everybody, right? Like it, that's not how it works, but pretending like it had this, like if we had seen the democracy, the, the, the democratic vote fail and it was announced that Trump was going to win, right? You can imagine that there'd be riots and people saying, no, fuck you, you guys can't destroy our, our republic like this. And that's what these people think they were doing. Yeah. Like they, and they were, they, you know, of course this is the, the result of uh, just, no, just years of, of bullshit, bizarre propaganda and then months of trump saying they stole our election they're lying they they cheated you whatever and right up until that morning when he said all right now i'll join you guys let's march down pennsylvania avenue i love pennsylvania avenue and we'll we'll all go break it we'll all go uh we'll all go show them what we're made of or something and I, like yeah, yeah I, I think this really ties into the the what evidence filtered evidence post because like I, I every now and then I watch uh, the Hodge twins on YouTube. They're uh, also known. I think the YouTube channel is called Conservative Twins or something. But uh, they're these twins, uh, black dudes that have a you know, they're very charismatic. They're fun to watch, and they seem to more or less encapsulate what the right is thinking. So every now and then I'll watch. Well, the right, as in the Trump right, uh, I'll watch them just to like get a get a feeling for how they're doing, and like. A week or two weeks before the uh, before this thing went down, I was watching one of their videos, and it was crazy. They were like, they were legit just talking to your audience, like uh, liberals. Uh, if you're watching this, you know that this was a stolen election. Like, no one out there believes that we had a record turnout for Joe Biden. No one there really believes that this many people came to vote, and like, they honestly, literally believe that everyone in the U.S knew that this was a fraud because it was so blatantly obvious. And and that was like what a good chunk of probably the vast majority of Trump supporters feel that this was this was just blatant theft and that the left was okay with letting it happen because it meant Trump would leave office. And so they were, you know, looking the other way this one time. It's insane to me that like you can be like you know, we've all heard over and over again about fake news and um the media being like putting people in a bubble of their own, you know, like it's like it, besides sort of having their own facts. Yeah, <laughs> that you can be that like insulated and and really oh, just the, the uncritical questions. You know, like what the same piece of paper that people check the Lindsey Graham box and check the Joe Biden box were like part of that paper was fraudulent, but the rest wasn't. Like, it's not like you sent in different pieces of paper voting for the president and the senator. Like, this this blows my mind. Um, it's, I, I I don't know. It. I just want to be like, what evidence did they have for the, like, did, did anybody even, like, present a good case for the election being a fraud? Like, so I, I don't, don't think know they did it. Or did they just say the words what, enough times and everyone's like, yeah, it's a fraud. I don't know what your standards for good are necessarily, but yeah, there there is always some evidence that something untoward has happened, and that's you know if that's all you hear and it's reflected and magnified over and over, and that's what you hear everybody else is also talking about, it it, it starts to sound convincing. It, it yeah, I mean, you're saying that they're just repeating it's a fraud, but not saying like how they found that out or what like how they suspect someone pulled it off. That's asking one question too deep, right? Like their first piece of evidence and their probably primary piece of evidence is that the outcome of the experiment wasn't what they expected. And so like, <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I don't like it either, but I don't know what, no, I mean, like what, that was their evidence was, I Oh yeah. I don't like this reality. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, well, I mean, in one way, you know, like if I had a very low probability estimate on something and then my experimental result said it was that something I'd be like, okay, let me double check. Like that's not unreasonable in general. Right. Um, it, so, like one of one of their pieces of evidence, it's interesting, was that um, all the courts, when they were approached with the protesters, didn't or not the protesters, but the people saying, "Hey, throw out these results," uh, they did not even look at the cases for the most part. They like they took a look and it was like, "This has no standing. There's no evidence here. <laughs> we're, we're just throwing it out." Which for everyone else in the world was like, "Yeah, it's so obvious that the court didn't bother wasting his time with it." But for them, it was like look, they're not even looking at it. They don't want to see it. They are hiding things. Yeah. And when you're, when you're primed to view things through a certain lens, that's, that's also evidence. And then of course you're getting uh, evidence from authority, people who you would expect to be very in the loop on these things. If you're primed a certain way um, saying, yes, this was, this was a fraud and it was stolen. So like if, if, 
the president himself comes up and says, this was a fraud. It was stolen. And you're like, I already trust the president. He seems to be in the know. He has privileged information. Yeah, he, had like, like, he was totally right about coronavirus, after all. <laughs> Eventually, sure. Chinese yeah. Books. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like, I, it's weird. Like the, I mean, so, some parts of this are so farcical, you know, it's like, Every every death is a tragedy, and I I'm an immortalist. You know, everyone everyone should know that that's my position. And yet, like I turn that switch off for a second, and then I hear that a woman with a "Don't tread on me" flag was trampled to death. Like, <laughs> I mean, sorry, I shouldn't know so, that. So it, it happened. It, uh, uh, so I hear. Um, oh, I, I didn't verify all the deaths, but I think that's that's one of them. So like. Well, if you know, it, they would have paid attention to the flag, she'd still be alive. But like, if I had put that on a TV show, people would have dismissed it as being, you know, farcical, right? Yes, yes. Like, and yet that—that's what happened allegedly. So I, like, I—I I don't know, man. It's—it's it's wild. I—I I don't have much else to add on it. Like, but like, are we know, living in a simulation? Because that—that's what I said when I heard this. But that was literally, literally my joke. I'm like, okay, is this a simulation? Is this a TV show? Yeah, that's where's like, the camera? I live like, in a sitcom. <laughs> I think my my favorite joke that I've heard from this so far is one that apparently is going around in South American countries that uh, the reason the coup failed is because there was no U.S. embassy in D.C. to provide logistical support. Right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, this, uh, I can link to this Guardian post uh, that has the timeline of all of this. You can just start at the oldest and go to the newest. And it was just, it was surreal watching this unfold. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it, and the other thing too, I guess this is worth talking about, you know, part of the fallout of this. So it was spurred on by, you know, Trump's uh, morning message of saying, go down there and give him hell. Um, and they did. Um, and so like, uh, well, so I, I, I've got mixed feelings on it, but they're mainly positive. And I think there's nuances to why it took so long. But uh, so the day of, you know, Trump put out that insane video and I watched it 90 seconds after it came out. Yeah, um, where where he's like, okay, yep, you guys you guys did a fine. I, I I I don't remember enough to summarize the whole thing except for the end where, and it was like a minute and thirteen seconds. If you can bear listening to it for that long, but um, he 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 couldn't be more tacitly uh up up uh opposing what happened, but he just says, okay, yep, we're gonna stay up. Encouraging. Well, that that's the thing is he was tacitly encouraging, but it was it was supposed to be a a message of like you know knock it off, you guys are fucking ridiculous, go home. Oh Instead yeah, no, like, it's the exact like, opposite. No, right. stop. Like he did, Don't. Yeah, he said, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we, you're very you're you're very special, and we love you. It's time to go home or something. Yeah, like I mean, the, so the, so short, shortly after that, he was uh, suspended from Twitter, um, which you know to many people, you know, great, four years too late, but. Um, we can talk about that in a minute. So then the next day I did watch to see what we, what he would say when he got back. Uh, he posted a video that was like clearly written by his lawyers saying, look, read this verbatim or I can't defend you in court. Um, that, that was, uh, like unambiguously condoning the, or, uh, uh, not what's the opposite of condoning, um, uh, disparaging yeah. and condemning. Thank you. The violence and everything that, and the, and the riots and everything that happened and conceding the election. Well, at that point, he'd already lost the coup. Like when, right. when it was I, still I going on, he—that's when he was giving them encouragement. Yeah, but this Once was written in, like lost, you try but, to cut your losses. But the three, the three or so minute video the next day was just so clearly written in not Trump speak that you know it was a verbatim pre prepared note for him. And it was like then, yes, yes, <laughs> so you can be you can be sure it wasn't a, a free flowing Trump thought. And so, um, well, a lot of his stuff is it, it's. It's coherent as long as you look at the emotion. Like the video that you mentioned, the 90 second video, it is all about saying like, we have been wronged. This is unfair. You are fighting for justice. Good job, guys. And even though like the words at the end are like, and all of you should go home with peace and love. Like, sure, those were his words, but you can tell what the message was. The message was, we have gotten royally fucked. And it's a good thing that someone's doing something about it. Yeah, like I, I get that the, the emotional core of that was... Uh, consistent, but I meant like semantically consistent. Oh yeah, um, no, that never happens with him. Yeah. So then the only other thing that day was some innocuous tweet that I can't remember what it was, but it was uh, it was not like perma band worthy, and yet he got perma banned. Um, the the president, you know, like so if, if I get on Twitter and I'm like, let's kill all the senators or something, I get banned because I'm a nobody, right? Mm -hmm. 
Like, and that makes sense. You know, the, 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 the president of the United States is delegated the same, uh, like, response by social media platforms that me, a nobody, would get. And it it's... That, like, so when I heard that, I'm like, wait, I, I didn't believe it. I'm like, wait, what? And I went and checked and his account's blocked or it's still like, it's, it's deleted. Um, it was announced on the news that like, or on various news outlets that it, he was, he was blocked from Twitter, then Facebook, then Instagram, then I left my brother. Some, <laughs> and then for some reason, like Spotify and a bunch of other people, like, he, like he's getting as much as that through Spotify, whatever. He's banned uh, from Pandora. <laughs> he's banned from Kohl's shopping. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Pinterest. <laughs> Ban him from everything digital. So, like, again, this would make sense if it was, like, Alex Jones, right? Like, and don't get me wrong, it makes sense for Trump, but it's so surreal. Like, the the president is no is is, is no longer trusted with the responsibility of handling a Twitter account. <laughs> I mean, and no, but, like, look what he did with it, though. I, I, well, I know. Don't get me wrong. They made the right call. But, 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 <laughs> but what weird TV show do we live in where it's like, oh, yeah, you know what? My 13-year-old isn't allowed on Twitter because they're not old enough. Uh, neither is the president, for similar reasons. <laughs> I, I found, I, I found what I found really interesting, and I think this is going to maybe have bad repercussions for uh, people in power, but maybe good for the rest of us. I'm not quite sure. Uh, is that basically for four years they just tap danced around, um, around trump's bullshit they were like tacitly you know being like yeah but okay he's the president we can allow him to do stuff republicans sort of sort of had his back the whole time and like they they accommodated it they used his lies and his bullshit for their own advantage because it would get them votes and it wasn't until their personal physical safety like they literally could have been maimed or killed for this uh as soon as that went down then Right away, they snapped into this president is awful. He's a liar. Uh, like Pence basically denounced him. I see, suspect that there may have been a secret 25th invoked that we just haven't been told about, but who knows? I um, read a weird thing about that. But, yeah, yeah, but like Mitch McConnell finally turned against him and was like, this president has got to get out of here. Like, th there's still some diehards out there, like the fucking Ted Cruz's of the world, that will lick his butthole forever because they know their constituents want that. But uh, for the most part, right away, people just stopped humoring him and took it seriously. And I'm like, huh. So it, if you want uh, politicians to actually take your suffering and problems seriously, all you have to do is personally threaten their physical safety. I'm not sure that's a lesson that politicians wanted to get out there, but it's certainly a well, loudly received message. I mean, yeah. I think it's not controversial that like... Or, I don't know, uh, I think it's a generally understood fact about humans that they will start to, like, take things seriously when their life or, yeah, personal safety is on the line. Like, yeah, I, like, don't, I don't think that, like, people didn't think that until now. I, I think one of my favorite uh, book series is Altered Carbon um, by Morgan, which has a terrible Netflix adaptation. Which I add the TV for anyway. good? No? Okay. Yeah, the adaptation, in my opinion, is awful. Just go read the books. The books are fantastic. But at yeah. one point, like someone tells him, look, this this was just business. This wasn't personal. And he's like, it was fucking personal to me. So now I'm making it personal to you. And that's what happened to the, the lawmakers here. Yeah, it's it's wild. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead, Jace. No, I, I just agreeing. Just, I don't know. <laughs> I'm still kind of like trying to check around to see if i'm on the candid camera or something i know right <laughs> it's, it's it's surreal i for for me it's just watching you know like yes it makes sense that of course they're gonna change their tune now because they're like oh turns out there's consequences to what we've been saying for the last three or four <laughs> years <laughs> um but like i i just i i don't I, so I was trying to think about like the twitter thing you know because i saw a lot of things and I don't, I don't i don't like when people shit on people for doing the right thing even if like it's you know hey too little too late or whatever it's like yeah but it's still like you know, so, like articles, articles of impeachment will be introduced again on Monday. Um, They're not so, going like, to go anywhere. Well, they probably won't. But like, is, does that make it? Does that make it a pointless gesture? Like, should they have done it earlier? Probably. Yes, but they should have done it the same day. If this shit happened. Oh yes, I mean they should have done it last week for sure. But I mean, like, should they have done it a month ago again? Probably. Yes. Like, the, all of this. He, the, he, this has been incited for a long time. This didn't just spring up on Wednesday morning. So like the, but I don't want to give people shit for eventually coming around to doing the right thing. And yet, like the that's been the response to like him being banned from Twitter is like, well, great, but you should have done it four years ago. And it's like, yeah, sure, but like, 
I, I do want to say it literally is better late than never. Um, like that, that is actually better. Uh, but the other, the other thing is like, I remember, uh, Jack Dorsey was on Sam Harris's podcast a couple of years ago and, uh, he's the CEO of Twitter and Sam asked him like, look, why is Trump still allowed on the platform? He violates the, the terms of service. You know, he's threatened nuclear war on there. Like, and, and I can't remember Dorsey's response exactly. I should go back and listen to the episode, but, um, it was something along the lines of like, it, it I mean, on the one hand, this isn't what he said. They do have different standards for world leaders on that platform. Um, so there's there's more leniency given to world leaders, which I think kind of makes sense. Like, you, yeah. I think, I mean, don't get me wrong. Not, 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 that, not that they should be allowed to do anything. And yet they're, they're not the average user. So I, I, I haven't fully fleshed this out, but I think that there's at least a case that can be made there that I'm not going to make yet. But the other thing is like, I the analogy I was, I was giving when I was talking about this the other day was like in... Europe or many parts of Europe, it's against the law to voice uh, the belief that the Holocaust was a hoax. Um, I I think that's a, a stupid law. Like I get why, and it and I'm, I'm, my context isn't uh, you know there on the ground. There might be good reasons for doing that that I'm unaware of. And yet I like the idea of letting stupid people broadcast how stupid they are, rather than not let them do it. So we don't know how stupid they are. Like. I, I think that that a, a case can be made that says yes, let these let these people go on TV and say that they don't believe in the Holocaust, and then we'll all know they're idiots. I think there's like, a difference there, though. Like, I'm and I'm not exactly sure. Uh, kind of have mixed thoughts, but I feel like banning Trump from Twitter doesn't. It's not silencing him. It's just saying we like you know you violated the terms of our uh, platform. Like I I don't I actually think that you know as a democracy, like shouldn't the leaders also like have to follow the same rules as everybody else i mean like contact uh, uh, uh with regard to conduct that's the word uh, <laughs> i don't know i mean I, I, you've already I, seen it huh? yeah i personally think they should and uh the fact that they don't in my opinion you know points out the fact that we live in an unfair unjust stupid world but uh yeah i personally think that everyone should be held to the same standard even if it's a stupid standard I I'm I'm on the fence, like I because I I agree on, on paper that that makes perfect sense, and yet like I think that it's it's nice to have the historical record of all of this insanity that otherwise wouldn't have come out, right? Like I think I would have come out. It just wouldn't have been on Twitter. I mean, but but on TV, he's he's less insane because he does he doesn't get a spot at three a.m. on TV. Like when he, when he's tweeting at three in the morning. That's like okay. You're seeing a that the president is up at three in the morning with nothing better to do than tweet, and uh, you're I I don't know. I like I said. I I, I think I'm probably on your guys' side, and yet I I can kind of see. I think he would have found value. an alternative platform that would have become really popular with like Trump supporters. Well, he's tried that with Parler, but Parler is now off the Google Play Store and will be off the App Store. I'm guessing by next week. Oh, dude, um, at some point, I don't know. I want to talk about like what's going on with Parler, but like the. If I'm not necessarily even saying that everybody should be uh, that the president should be censored the same as all the other users, like I'm just fine if everyone else is allowed to say the same stuff Trump is allowed to say. Like I just want the standards to be the yeah, same exactly. for everyone. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I and I think you make a good point. I like I said for me, it's just been I think it's 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 revealing and important to have this 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 public record of of insanity so that it's it's available to everybody forever. Uh, like granted, he's still like you said, he has he has ways to communicate with the public. He can get on the TV whenever he wants. He still has access to that national service that can you know emergency ping all of our phones with Kofefe at three three at three in the morning. Um, I'm really kind of hoping I get one of those before the end of the year or before the end of the month. Um, like I mean, how hilarious would it be if he just decided, yep, that's I'm going to ping every phone in the country and I'm going to give some bullshit insane message. But more fun than that, I'd love if it was just another Kofefe. Like that would blow my mind. Um, so like it's it was also interesting too i think that the uh when when twitter blocked his his support video or his endorsement video like the minute long one during the the actual assault on the capitol they 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 uh i don't know what kind of block it is i'm not fluent in twitter but like you couldn't retweet or reply or something and yet i still saw them retweeted and replied i'm not sure how that worked but uh there was um the there was a, a a warning there that said like risk of you know you can't you can't use you can't retweet this because of a risk of violence 
And that was the first time that that message had ever appeared as like a, a warning label on Twitter. In fact, I don't think they introduced warning labels on, on tweets until Trump started tweeting up coronavirus bullshit. Was that literally the first time that risk of violence thing had been used on Twitter? Yes. Oh, neat. Like other, other ones, they just delete, right? Okay. Um, so like, but it's, it's, I don't know, the whole thing was fucking weird. So I don't know what much else I have to say on it other than like, on the plus side, Georgia flip blue. Um, there's a good chance we'll get some shit done uh, progressively going forward the next four years. Like, don't get me wrong, you know, and this is, you know, speaking of letting the perfect be the enemy, the good, you know, like the better too late than never kind of mentality. Like, you know, I I would never have campaigned for Joe Biden, but I would have crawled through glass to vote for him, right? Like, you know, he's, he's I don't think, I, I don't know anybody who is a stoked Biden support, or a, yeah, Joe Biden supporter, but- <laughs> My it's, friend has a sticker on their laptop that says Biden sucks, vote Biden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that that's kind of the attitude. And like, I guess, I guess I'm getting at those that I, I do trust a, a, a return to like five years ago when, and I've been told by a couple of people that like, yes, Stephen, but you were just out of the loop. Things actually were bad five years ago, but I, I am prepared to, to, you know, fight on the hill of they weren't this bad. They weren't even close to this bad. You know, Obama didn't walk on water, but he like he was not three in the morning screaming that, you know, Pocahontas was being treasonous by endorsing the articles of impeachment against him, right? Like th this that that's that's how the current president of the United States spent his time. Like that I, I do think I mean, while yes, he is the worst president uh that we've had in living memory at least. I don't know how bad they were back in the eighteen hundreds. Some of them uh, are pretty weird, but like Yeah, possibly he's the worst in history. I'm not sure. Like I think Andrew Jackson could be worse and uh the the vice president that took over when Lincoln was shot, uh very likely much worse. But Jackson uh, Jackson wasn't was a complete shit, but I think he at least advanced the goals of the country. Yeah, so Trump definitely absolutely terrible president. But um I, I I believe that you are strongly having the same filtered evidence thing because there are some good things that Trump did. Uh, and I, I don't want to like list all of them because I don't want to seem like I'm supporting him here, but there were definite bright spots to the administration. And uh, he, he like Obama just kept sending more troops into foreign countries and bombing more people. And Trump actually curtailed that a bit. So if nothing else, he killed less foreigners than the previous presidents. Um, yeah, I mean, and that's a good point. You know, there if you know if called upon to name positive things that that Trump's done, I mean, he did follow through on his promise to donate his salary. He, um, he reduced the power of the FDA. Obviously, not nearly enough to stop them from fucking us all with COVID shit, but uh, he he helped a little bit in that regard. Yeah, so you know, it's it's tough to say. Like, I I think a hard part of what is good or. No, no. I, I mean, the harm was was really bad. I just want to point out that like there's a filtered evidence thing going on here as well, where I, I don't he want to go on the record that like everything he did was the worst ever. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go so far as to say that. Like, I, I, I will. I, I will. I, I will confidently assert that everything that he did that had any positive outcomes were done for self serving reasons. Um, like it's. And I think that's like motivations matter for that reason. Like I can count on somebody to do repeat behavior of this vein if their motivations were uh, of a certain clear of a certain kind, right? Um, like I can't I can't count on. Uh, I mean, it's the, it's 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 the intent, right? Um, that, let's that, that's like why manslaughter is a different charge than murder, even though the outcome is you know dead people on either case. Like I think that. That intent matters a lot, and like his reasons for doing things is um, self-aggrandizement. Yeah, and but like I said, you know, if if, if it, well, not if it worked out that a handful of times that uh, the the blind squirrel found a nut a couple of times over the last four years, great. Um, and it, I, I don't want to be like just a complete, you know, uh, leftist shill. Um, I mean, I, I'm registered independent. Like I I have never voted. Uh, Republican on any tickets because since I've been old enough to vote, it's been pure insanity over there, and it's only gotten worse since I've gotten older. Um, but it's just uh, I don't know. I, I don't have much else to say on it. Like I'm looking forward to uh, the next four years. It in the sense that like you know I I wasn't I didn't I, the the amount of time 
and bandwidth in my brain that that what's going on in the White House has taken up over the last four years is not positive. Like I didn't, I didn't feel like I needed to be in the loop five years ago because there was it wasn't as insane five years ago. I have at least two things to touch on before we move on. Mm -hmm. Uh, The first thing being, do you guys? uh, And let me explain myself before you jump down my throat about this. Do you guys think maybe this attempted coup was a net positive for the nation? Yes. And oh, okay. Well, that was easy. Um, (laughs) Real quickly, my 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 uh, reason behind this is that, like, if it had never happened, I think things would have gone on as they were before with Trump and his supporters having some legitimacy uh, and being still coddled and treated like uh, like participants in the game. And now that this has happened, like everybody has just, or everybody except for the insane hardcore uh, supporters, which hopefully are going to be um, dwindling and not increasing, uh, has been cast aside by the body politic and by everybody reasonable and they've just been you know galvanized into this this must be rejected we cannot uh we cannot put up with this shit anymore kind of thing which i think is ultimately probably a a a good thing i think some positives i see coming from this are better security and thicker glass at important <laughs> government buildings um i don't i don't mean that as a joke i mean like for for real, for real um, you shouldn't be able to smash your way into the capitol building with with a pole yeah like it should be really hard to get in there and like I get, it's an old building with a lot of historical value to it, and that's probably the, you know that glass I'm assuming was really old because um, it hadn't been physically tested like that before, and it had no it had no cause to be. Um, I think that these people should be hidden behind bulletproof glass, right, um, or at least secured behind it uh, while they're conducting government business. Like I I don't want it to be easy for anyone to just barge their way in and start shooting people. Like we talked about, if these people were the least bit organized. We would have had tons of dead government leaders, and I don't see that as a good thing. Um, some people will say they do, and I don't think that they know what they're talking about. Um, like the the community, like you said, uh, I, some will probably dwindle off, but I think we'll see some of that evaporative cooling. I think the ones that are left will be even more uh, charged than they were last week, and I am desperately worried about the safety of the inauguration. Um, you know, and oh, that was the that was Trump's last tweet. I will not be attending the inauguration. Or to the, many people have asked me, no, I will not be attending the inauguration. Um, which people took as a um, if you read if if you if you're dedicated to read between the lines, there. I never like want to give Trump the credit to, to say that he is smart enough to put things between, between the lines. Like I think he's just saying I'm not going to be there because I don't like him. Me, I'm a sore loser. I think that's what the tweet meant in its entirety. But what it what it also conveys is that hey. If the bomb goes off there, it won't kill me. Um, and so that was his last tweet before he got banned. Uh, like, so I do worry that the the galvanized base there uh, will be less unorganized next time. Um, I also don't think that they'll make a bunch of security gaps at the inaugurations. So I'm not losing sleep over it, but I, I don't expect it to go peacefully. Um, Jace, you had strong agreement with me to convey? <laughs> Basically, I mean, um, I'm like trying to think of a way to put it, and uh, it's like I sort of also just feel like there's good that came out of coronavirus too, and like it's just the sort of like shaking somebody by the shoulders. Like pandemic was pandemic outbreak was something I was super worried about. Like since I was the little nerd kid reading about like virology and stuff, it's just it was always this like. Like the, the 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 pandemic we got could have been so much worse. Yeah. Um, and we still kind of fucked it up. But I mean, like it like it woke people up. Like, oh shit! Like you know, like people are dying. <laughs> I remember, like, I mean, one of the things that, uh, one of the outcomes, like I think I've told you that, like my parents and my dad in particular, are, like just like anti science based medicine. My dad's a like global warming denialist, and I remember that when reports of like the pandemic were first coming out, I was talking to my parents and they're like, Oh yeah, they're, they're totally overblowing this. This is, this is ridiculous. And like, their tune has changed now. <laughs> like now they're like, Oh my God, it's horrible. I'm watching the news. It's like, there's all these people on ventilators and I'm like, you know, scared about your grandma. And I'm just like, yes, thank you. Take things seriously. <laughs> like, <laughs> and that's kind of like, yeah, this was like a bumbling attempt at what could have, you know, been, like the, the riot we could have gotten could have been so much worse, but like now, you know, people are, have been woken up that like, okay, like this isn't just a funny joke. 
I guess. Yeah. I, like, I think that it's, yeah, it's a t- again, it's really hard for me to like say that like, yeah, that like this was a good thing. Cause obviously these are both terrible things. Like, but I mean, I think like, I'm just grateful that like what we got wasn't, you know, a organized militant group with like 30 bombs or something. We just got like yeah, the people that kind of broke the windows and then walked around, like <laughs> took a selfie of themselves, like their feet up on Nancy Pelosi's desk. Well, and, and luckily too, they they were nice enough to use you know their own phones and post their own twitters, like so yeah. they were, a lot of them were really easy to track down. Not the uh, like sharpest crayons in the box, but uh, right. And, and and let it not be conflated that like this event had positive outcomes. That's not the same thing as saying this was good that it happened. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, the the thing I was saying is like I, I wasn't saying that this is a bad thing that it happened, but it has some positive sides. Like I was literally putting forward the proposition that it is a good thing that this happened, um, because it has resolved some things that the future could be much worse if they hadn't been resolved at this point. And I don't know if that's actually true. I think we will find that out as time goes on, because maybe uh, this is just another step in the escalation escalator and uh, things are keep going to get worse. And this was just the one time where people realized, all right, now both sides can uh, use lots of violence to advance their agenda. But on the other hand, this, this may be a thing where finally people stop treating it like a game and treating it um and treating the, the Trump like some a serious problem that needs to be acknowledged and dealt with uh quickly and firmly and so I think it's entirely possible that this whole thing was indeed a good thing that it happened. Yeah. Like we as a species need to or at least like maybe just we as Americans really need to do a post mortem analysis on like, okay, like how did this even happen? How do we like prevent this sort of thing from happening in the future like i just am sort of like exasperated that it took this this long and like this ridiculous of an outcome for people to start realizing that just the insanity that's been going on yeah yeah i i guess i'm I'm less interested in like attaching like good or bad label to things and just like looking at the outcome of it and I think that you're right. It, it it may well have a net positive. On the other hand, like you said, it could show people like, oh, all we need to do to get our way is to start throwing Molotovs through the Capitol building windows. Um, well, like okay. that wouldn't show them that because they didn't get their way. Well, like, good point. What, what it kind of proved is like you, you won't accomplish anything with this idiocy. Maybe maybe it'll show how you easy it is. Look to, like idiots. Maybe it'll open the door to say, oh, look, it's actually a lot easier than I thought to to assault our elected officials. Um, like. I'm not really sure exactly what it'll take or what what the outcome will be. I'm 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 hopeful that that things will be less insane going forward. And I mean that's that's the thing too. Like imagine if we had imagine this alternate universe where we had a a, a liberal Trump. Like I can't quite picture what that would be like because I want somebody just as unorganized and selfish and insane as he is. Um, and I can imagine you what I can kind of imagine like imagine like some of the people on like your doof Discord. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, yeah. All right. I uh, give you some some concrete examples. So, imagine how much worse the next 4 years would be if we had a polar opposite of Trump and like we had uh like in- instead of Biden his accept his his uh it wasn't his acceptance speech. It was the yeah, that's what it, whatever it was, his victory speech that he gave when he won the electoral vote. Um he stressed over and over like I am not the president for people who voted for me. I'm, I am everybody's president. You know, we, as a, we, as Americans are going to, you know, come together and come. To, it was, it was a whole unity message, you know, and granted it's, it's political platitudes, but I think that's going to be more or less like the kind of sentiment he's going to be pushing forward for the next four years where imagine if instead it was like, all right, we got them. Fuck these guys. We're going to get them back. Like they tried to get us like that. That could have happened. Right. That would be terrible. Yeah, did you see his uh, speech that he gave in the middle of the Capitol riot? I read the highlights of it. Like, I call on President Trump to get on TV now and tell him to stop. Yeah, it was really interesting. It was only like five minutes. Um, one of the things he said right near the beginning is, uh, like, we this is not us. This is not Americans. We don't do this sort of thing. When he was referring to, you know, the rioters. And, like, on the one hand, sure, it's a unifying message and all that. But, like, I, I noticed that he was othering the people that were currently looting the Capitol because 
it, it, it at mm-hmm. least it struck to me that like if they need to send people in, uh, like send the guard in to sweep these people out and have massive casualties and people killed in on the floors of the Senate to get them out, like they are not true Americans, is what he's saying. This is not us. These people are not Americans, and I, I thought it was subtle and i'm not sure if it was effective or not because we never had to find out but uh i, I thought that was an interesting thing he did mm, i mean I i'm like trying it. to think of what else he could possibly have said that wouldn't have been exactly like what trump said other than hey you're just like us i understand you you know like o- other than endorsing it i can't imagine what he would have done other than using some othering language mm, i mean like i don't like that it's sort of it's suggesting that like hmm, sort of the way like nazis are or are- like almost in retrospect, like being characterized as these kind of like mythical demons. Like this, this is what can happen. Like this is the way people's minds can get turned if you know they're following the wrong, like the, a crazy figurehead. Um, and like I, I, my understanding is really a lot of like Trump's effectiveness was just sort of the he sort is sort of incoherently emotional, <laughs> and people were able to sort of just project their own anxieties like you know a lot of like rural poor uh opioid epidemic affected like you know like people losing jobs like there's people that are not just rural poor, like people in the suburbs that are yeah i'm, I'm just sort of saying like yeah. anybody who did end up becoming a trump supporter like some of them are just as nuts as trump and believe all the like conspiracy stuff but like some of them are just like i don't know like pe- people genuinely suffering who have like real concerns and I think that it's a little bit, it's a little bit invalidating of like, of that to kind of go like, you know, the, the like, uh, I'm, I'm not being very like coherent with this. I think I get what you're saying. Yeah. I like, I, I always like, don't, I don't know. That, that's kind of like the identity politics thing that bugs me about that too. Or like, or any of the us versus them. Like, I, I don't, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. Um, it, it feels overly simplistic. It feels tribalistic. Like I would prefer having a leader that could actually face the people and be like, like, Hey, th- that happened. Let's pay attention to that. Let's not like, you know, laugh at it or brush it aside or be like, well, like we fixed that. And now it's gone forever. It's like, no, there's like, we've got issues in this country. Uh, maybe let's look at that. <laughs> and- See, I, I guess I trust Biden and his, his administration to be able to do that more. Um, certainly than we've seen. I mean, I, I should hope. I can hardly imagine doing it worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I could trust Trump to point at the issues and yell and like basically scratch at the wound, right? Just keep inflaming it and infuriating it and making things much worse. Yeah. Whereas I think I can trust Biden to completely ignore the wound and pretend exactly. it's not there and let it get septic, which probably is not as bad as constantly making it worse, but uh, isn't that much better. The things things were building up until we got Trump, though. And that, that was, yeah. I think, the result of, you know, Obama was doing the same thing with the, like, un- unity and, like, you know, we're going to try to, like, have this bipartisan thing. And it's, like, kind of ignoring the fact that, like, actually there are, like, people that hate each other. <laughs> like, well, then, then what are we supposed to do? Uh, like, I mean, like, not, I feel like pushing forward a message of let's work together to solve our problems rather than let's fight until we're all too tired and bloody no, to solve our problems. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to say that we sh- we should have a war or something, but I mean, like, uh, yeah, what I'm just trying to, you know, what I'm I totally about is the, is the ignoring it, the like, or, or the like dismissing it as, you know, that was us versus them and we won so they could suck it. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree that like it is a thing that we should work on together and not a thing that we should fight each other about because I think fighting is like violent fighting is the worst thing you could possibly do. It's it just leaves yeah. one side dead as opposed to anything resolved. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but I think that like a lot of times uh at least up until uh, Trump was elected, when people said "let's work on this together," what they meant was let's let the let's let the uh, the elites in power that are leaning liberal left just enact their policies, and the the other side has to suck it up because they know what's right. Like work together was a code word for you are racist and sexist and wrong, and you must change and be like us instead. And that's that's not working together. That's just kind of imposing your own view on the other side. I don't like this mystery code talk. I mean, what more could it have been? Uh, like, I guess if, if your real message is let's work together to solve this, what will you? What 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 more could you say? Like, I guess you could do things differently. Is that what you guys I don't are think saying? I would say let's yeah, work together to solve this. I would say like, 
like I I I think pe- when people make the when people come back and say affirmative action feels like reverse racism to me, and um, that's not great. What the response was was uh, no, it's not. This is just you know equalizing things for people. You're a racist for even saying that, and there can be no such thing as racism against white people because of structural inequities. Like the the pushback was basically shut up you're a racist as opposed to you know let's take their concerns seriously about things yeah i i i I guess i i mean i i maybe i'm revealing inside myself some partisanship i didn't know i had but like part of me thinks that like it if someone says you know i want a a an ethnic an ethnic ethnically pure United States, and I want all those, you know, non-whites out of here. Like, where do you meet in the middle on that, right? So no, you don't. F- fuck those people. But <laughs> I mean, like, not. I guess, like, those are actual racists, and we don't want them around. Um, oh, so you, oh, you're talking about like, you know, like just the, leaving the, people. The tribalism thing is. Or, or, I don't know. Um, hmm. I, I have to like think about. Whether, you mean rather than I, I, you I, mean I, rather I, than I, branding I, anyone who disagree with as the hated enemy? Yeah. You mean, Okay, I thought that you were saying like the 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 actual small subset of those people that we brand that way who actually are that way. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <sighs> God, I just like to lighten the mood. I, I was sort of when we were talking about Trump and Twitter earlier. I was like, I wonder what it would have looked like if like Hitler had, had Twitter. <laughs> I, I wonder if anybody has like doctored tweets. Like, if if not, like, somebody please make a blog and do that. Like, I want to see Hitler's three AM tweets. Like from what I hear of Hitler, it would have been very similar to Trump yeah. in that it would be very emotionally pure and relevant, uh, but uh, kind of incoherent and semantically a fucked up mess. I think for me, the the horrifying part is that like Hitler was effective. Like this this is how bad it can get with an ineffective imbecile. Like I and I, I'm not an expert. Maybe Hitler was actually completely stupid, but I feel like you don't you don't successfully overthrow a government and like run a a campaign to take over the world if you're a complete idiot. So like I, I think that he he must have not been as stupid as as Trump. And like that's that's the thing that I I've seen people worry that well you know Hitler went to jail and then he came back and took over the country. And I'm like I don't really see that happening with Trump. Like. In terms of both governance and military, I hear Hitler was a fucking disaster. Yeah, he was just incredibly persuasive, and like the thing with Germany was they were so fucked at that point that almost the entire nation was like the hardcore Trump supporters we have now. Yeah, it's like the and- same deal actually, where it was just somebody getting up on a podium, flailing and giving speeches about like you know that that showed deep emotion, and he also gave you know the German populace the, the scapegoat or a bunch of scapegoats. You know, it's. You, you people aren't failing. It's their fault. It's, yeah. you know, these others' fault. Like, imagine if Hitler, instead of having a hardcore base of 20%, had a hardcore base of 60 or 65% of the populace. That's, that, it, he still would be absolutely incompetent, but he'd have a ton of power and would likely be, you know, dissolving the Senate right now. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I was just reflecting earlier this week that my knowledge of history is complete bull- is complete garbage. Like, I don't know if you ask me what World War II started about and who the main players were, I couldn't t- couldn't tell you other than like the obvious superpowers. It was like an Archduke Ferdinand. No, right. that was World War One. Oh. oh, did I say World War II? I meant World War One. Yeah. So like I I don't I don't know fuck all about history. So I it is a I was just thinking about it earlier this week that it's a gigantic blind spot in my like knowledge base. Um yeah. What do you need I to say about those who don't know history. I absolutely cannot recommend enough listening to uh, the entire backlog of Dan Carlin's Hardcore History. It goes deep into stuff, and he presents it in a way that is very compelling and fun to listen to. So anytime you want to learn more stuff about history, check out Dan Carlin. He's awesome. I always keep meaning to, and I've heard three hours of his podcast, and I need to, but that means I've listened to half of an episode. So yeah. I, need to, <laughs> I need to get back the, into like actually dedicate time. The older ones were a lot shorter. Right on. All right. Uh, well. I got one last thing uh, before we go on, uh, and this this is part of the reason that like I think what happened may have been good is the fact that it didn't really have any bad side effects. There were th- this started out like as sort of a riot slash coup attempt slash something, 
and basically devolved into people meandering around and taking selfies. And it turned in, it turned into a meme. It was a, pro, a meme protest or a protest meme. And uh, an amazing login over on our Basin Conspiracy Discord uh, server pointed out that, like, this should be taken as empirical evidence as to uh, how riots can be handled. And that, you know, maybe the hard-handed approach being used to BLM approach is uh, BLM protests is is bad. <laughs> and and I was like, so so what do you mean, like? When there's a riding mob, you just kind of evacuate the area of anyone that could be hurt and just let, let them, them <laughs> yeah, just just let them go until they get tired and they wander away. And it sounds like, yeah, kind of, that, I think kind of. a little bit more nuance about like, but like, yeah, I mean, I think you're taking that into account too, like. Yeah, and Amazing Logan said, like, okay, so this style clearly does some things we like, like nobody, or almost nobody was killed, and uh, like buildings property. weren't burned to the ground, but... Uh, Not wait, as probably as much property damage as there might have been if they had encountered resistance. Yeah, yeah, so, like, how can we get this where it turns into a meme and people wander away unhurt, and we can avoid the bad things that happened, like the entire Capitol building being wrecked? Like, we, we would like to avoid property damage and lootings and stuff if possible, but, like, this is a point of evidence in the fact that, I don't know, like, again, the same, <laughs> I'm going to reference Altered Carbon again, because I really love that series. Uh, at one point, the author says, uh, in, in the form of the main character, that all wars are hormonal that they're just things people need to get out of their systems. And yeah. I think I think that's why we attacked Afghanistan uh, after 9-11, or, or rather, why we attacked Iraq after 9-11. Yeah, we went in Afghanistan. Goodism. It was like, you know, something terrible happened and people needed to point a finger at somebody and be like, and, and have a, a sense that someone's doing something about it. Yeah, we went to Afghanistan, the country folded like in a month, and we just didn't, the populace in general didn't feel like the Arabs had been punched hard enough, and so they went after Iraq after that. And like, I mean, that's not the reason our leaders did it, but I think that's why the populace was behind it. They were like, we need to do more violence in revenge. And and I, you know, it, Amazing Logan kind of made the point that like when you have the resistance of the cops, you get more and more people stoked up and, and things escalate, whereas if like one side folds entirely, the other side eventually gets some shit out of their system by breaking some windows and then gets tired and goes away. Yeah, I mean, like, but also, uh, putting this in the context of 9-11, oh, okay. What about also just, like, try not to get to the point where people are rioting? Like, when people are, I mean, like, yeah, again, like, you know, uh, there was, you could see stuff building up to the Trump administration. Like, people were unhappy. Uh, There's a lot of, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, unrest. Obviously, like, uh, huh? I said unrest. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There was unrest, but there there were people with like real concerns, and maybe like you know, I, I think that the fact that we have our two party like us versus them system, and like you know, you, you guys are dumb hicks, shut up, and it's like, oh yeah, like well, you liberals and your educations, and like it's it's kind of like maybe like could we grow up as a species and start like. <laughs> No, we cannot. <laughs> Not until we get I'm immortality, so, so most yeah. people are over 100. I'm so goddamn frustrated. Yeah. No, I mean, and the, the thing is, I'm sure this wouldn't work in all contexts. Like, I don't, yeah. I'm not sure if you guys were, um, like, alive and or conscious to the news when the, um, the LA riots happened. Uh, Rodney King was beaten by some cops uh, almost to death, and uh, then they were acquitted, and then LA erupted in fire for like a week. It was insane. But like, I, I'm i not... God, now I don't remember, because it was so long ago, and I was so young. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there was like a big counter-riot police force at the time. I kind of thought that it just sort of spontaneously happened, and nothing would have changed that, but maybe, maybe there were a lot of cops out for them to have someone to fight against. Shit. Now I feel like I should look, look that up before I started talking. Uh, I don't know. So but, what uh, like, are you confused about? Um, whether whether their weather backing off would have had any effect on oh. preventing those riots from getting worse. Yeah, I guess we can't know. Well, um, we probably could look into that, but I didn't right now. But I mean, like, uh, Logan points well, out... I mean, like, one are, of, you, are you... Uh, never mind, go on. Yeah, well, Logan points out one of the end states of these riots is that they turn into a fucking meme, and we want to encourage that as much as possible. And, like, this should be some evidence as to how that can be done, and can we incorporate that into the future, as opposed to just cracking down harder and harder and making things worse? If this is 
a way that we can make that we can guide riots into into resolving themselves that would be much better i think i guess i still sort of think like it's sort of ignoring the root cause though like i'm looking at the 1992 los angeles riots and it, it kind of like people started rioting because of excessive use of force by the police and yeah. then it was resolved by the California National Guard, the U.S. military, and several federal law enforcement agencies coming in and just, like, stamping it out. So it's, like, kind of proving the point, actually. <laughs> like, oh, the, you know, the, the police uses excessive force, and then it's just like, we're going to stop that with more excessive force. Yeah. Well, at uh, some point, force, force will be required. Like, force should have happened on this insurrection. Like, I mean... Especially if, if they were in there with hostages, right? We wouldn't call it excessive. And I'm not saying that that's analogous to the LA riots. I'm just saying that, like, just because there's a military response doesn't mean that it's an excessive use of force. Uh, right. But, like, what if there had been National Guard at the Capitol building and they'd opened fire on the protesters? Like, either we'd have a massacre on our hands or we'd have, like, people going crazy and burning fucking the Capitol to the ground in riots as opposed to just sort of, you know, trashing one building. I guess I I don't know if I want to place trust that every, you know, every riot will be a meme riot like this one. Right. And so if... if like, how do we get that? Well, I, 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 I think I'm, I'm liking Jace's proposal more and more to just not let it get to that point. Yeah, I think we like, can't always get that. But like, it, it just happened that these people were unorganized and didn't know how to do proper guerrilla warfare. Like, they didn't have a plan. But, like, that's... Yeah, like, next to none of them even had guns. Like... And and this is the oh, I mean going to be the case. Yeah, I I I don't want to. I think it's an interesting idea. Like, all right, go in there, scream your little hearts out, and get tired and go home. Like that. I mean, it's like letting your kid hold its breath when it's pissed, right? Like, I I, I suppose there are circumstances where, like, yes, it's just going to yell itself until it's you know yell until it's tired and falls asleep. Like that's doesn't mean that their issues are going to go away that caused them to have the tantrum in the first place, though. That just like they're going to you know quiet down for a while and then probably exactly. be more angry later, though. That like that, that's what I'm saying. Annoyed. Yeah, but the thing you really want to prevent is people dying and yeah. cities burning down, and then you can work on the longer things in the long term. I suppose as long as you're working on them. I don't really know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I can't really run enough, like, I don't have enough, uh, like, so, uh, I don't have enough RAM or data to run that simulation enough times in my head to see how it would work out. Um, well, I mean, you don't need that. What I think would be great is if the government actually ran experiments. I mean, obviously, covertly, they can't say they're doing this. But, like, when there is violent BLM protests or violent protests of any kind, instead of pushing back, just, like, withdraw. Withdraw everyone. Let them do their thing. Let them smash some buildings. And like, see what happens. See if it does make things die down instead of escalating. And if so, like, maybe this could be a new playbook. I mean, like, I think it's, kind of, go ahead. It's worth articulate. It's worth at least putting a pin, a flag in the fact that like the overwhelming supermajority of BLM protests were nonviolent. Like, and to the extent that there were violence, it was people getting their asses whooped by the cops. Uh, like, there there was a lot of burning of buildings. I think in the in the like subsequent days, maybe that's what kind of what you're talking about. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, so so you you go to you go to stand peacefully in line and hold a sign, and you get your mask ripped off and maced in the face. Then yeah, next day you're going to come back with a brick. Um, yeah, it's okay. just going to keep yeah. escalating. Yeah, well, I mean, the majority of people who went to the Capitol protests were just holding signs too, and then you know it escalated. Yeah, I'm not enough of a political scientist to have a, a strong opinion on yeah. how that would work out. Like, I I don't like the idea of just saying, "Yep, let them let them." Let them scream, and then we'll we'll see if we can get around to solving their problems. Um, especially too, because well, there's certainly no way you can solve a problem in a night while people are screaming. No, like, these are long-term things that are going to take but months. Maybe you can do, like... But, you, but you, no, it never starts with a with a with a riot in the streets, right? The 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 contentions that people have that that spark riots and and uh, protests never first appear with people screaming in the street by in the in the tens of thousands, like. So, so you get, you adjust the points before that point. Yeah. But again, that's, that's hard. And you know, who do you capitulate to and um, how, how do you make it happen? Like, yeah, this is not an easy problem. This is going to require massive coordination and come to think of it. Isn't that basically what they did with the Chaz area in Seattle? What? Chaz, the, the, the free Republic in that, that took over the Capitol Hill of Seattle for like a month or two. Oh, 
and, and the, just let them do it. Yeah, and the the U.S. government was basically like, okay, the, this few square miles is now an independent republic. Now have fun. And after a couple months, they kind of got tired and went away. Governance is hard. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Maybe you know, once we're all living in a simulation, then <laughs> we can do weird experiments. I don't know. Uh, or once we're all immortal. I mean, like, yeah. hopefully, no, we're not in one of those simulations where people are running to see what would happen. I mean, I guess it the, kind of yeah. feels like it lately, but like the the I guess the only part that sucks about Chaz is like the people who had businesses there just having their their businesses ruined for the number of months that 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 thing was around i like don't know very much about this Did, they, they, just, they just had to like evacuate and like and then they were I mean, screwed like okay your, your house and your business are now like in this independent republic of whatever the fuck and like yeah. did anybody take care of them or like no not really it was a place that had no laws for a period of time i need to look this up actually like i like I, I, I didn't hear very much about it because it just kind of went away over time. But uh, yeah, there was, I don't know how many weeks it was where it was just like, we we hold this property now, U.S. government, come at us, bro. And the U.S. government was like, nah. Hmm. Well, I think space travel is the answer. <laughs> Mars colony, you know, like get people off the earth, <laughs> spread people out enough that they can all form their own little like Dyson colonies. And yeah, you know, we we just need to get like, Unlimited resources, UBI, mortality, you know, it's, <laughs> that's how we fix it. Yeah. We yeah. And, and the riots, it's not like riots have no body count. Their people were burned yeah. to death in, in some of these things. Yeah, I think, I think we've got a. I think it's like mitigating know, the amount of damage, though, is, is the thing that we're trying to figure out. Like, yeah. I think we just hurry and solve problems. Like you said, you know, it's kind UBI. Of a problem. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I. There's another point I want to take. It keeps jumping into mind and then slipping. Like I don't think we've used the word terrorist yet, and like it's it's mainly because Stephen, like, white people aren't terrorists. Well, I wasn't. Uh, uh, I, I know you're joking, but like I I was just gonna say that like I feel like the the I I almost don't want to give this the credit of a terrorist attack, right? Like don't get me wrong, you know some of the people who jumped in with weapons and uh, those hog tying zip ties, I think it's unequivocal. Yeah, um, there are a few people who wanted it to be terror attack. They but, called, like, right. Like, it didn't have terror, it, though. It, like, competence doesn't weigh into whether or not you get labeled a terrorist. <laughs> I, I, it almost does, in my mind, just as, like, an, like, an implicit handle, but you're right. I think, uh, realistically, it doesn't. Um, I'm also just skimming back through this Guardian article and, like, uh, it, I'm in, uh, Representative Mondaire Jones, I, I disagree. Uh, he says that Washington, D.C. is designed to be one of the most secure places on Earth. And I'm like, no, it's not. No. What if had thicker glass? <laughs> you know, I was just thinking, with the whole pulling back and letting the riot burn itself out and become a meme thing, that could work for, like, government buildings. But, like, part of the death count that happened in the, the BLM riots was people trying to loot small businesses and, you know, property owners who, like, this is their livelihood, fought back. They, like, had guns. They're like, get out of my shop, yeah. get out of my house, or I will shoot you. And then they didn't, and they shot them. And, like, you, what, what are you going to do? Unless you have the National Guard go and evacuate everyone in the area that's going to be that's going to be damaged. And even it, then, it probably, I mean, it's sort of like yeah. the Republic of whatever the fuck. Like, then what happens? Like, yeah, yeah. You, know, like, okay, do, you evacuate everybody, they come back, they're, they're home, and, like, their business is burned to the ground or, like, looted. And it's like, well... But at least, you know, the death count was low, which I guess, like, I'm actually still looking at this Wikipedia about the 1992 Los Angeles riots. They destroyed Koreatown. Yeah. $400 million damages. And then uh, it says Korean Americans. They? Uh, the, the rioters. The rioters and the national. What, what did the rioters have against Koreatown? Uh, it, it, it was it there. It in Koreatown. And it's saying that, like, because Korean Americans, you know, were had a low social status and a language barrier, they got, like, no aid or protection from police. And then, like, that, that sort of thing did exact happen. Uh, yeah, well, a bunch of people houses and, and businesses were burned down their whole, like... So, yeah, that, that that's, like... I, I want to, like, minimize also just collateral damage like that. If they could channel rioters into, like, government buildings right. that are designed to be destroyed until people are happy and then rebuilt over the next week, that yeah. that would... I guess that would turn into theater and people would stop doing that soon 
Yeah, so you're, you're, the, the proposed solution here is to build flimsy, and, <laughs> yeah, build, build flimsy and easily breachable government buildings that are designed to be destroyed. And when riots start, like leave the doors to Target and Walmart open so that people are incentivized to go after those places first. Uh, and hopefully yeah. they get too tired carrying everything out of there before Can they... It's like a giant distraction. Like what if there was just a big inflatable Trump that they sort of threw... You know, like, or like, well, I guess it wouldn't be Trump and the Trump supporters, like, whatever, like, I don't know, a, a big inflatable police officer, like, just yeah, I, get, go I don't wild. Know. I, <laughs> Give everybody, like, sticks and make a big pinata. I feel like once we get to the point where people are throwing bricks and Molotovs, we've already lost. And, like, yes, you can yeah. lose harder after that, yeah. but I don't want to, uh, I don't want to allow. Like, I don't want to concede and say, let's let it get there and let them get the, you know, and I don't think anyone's proposing that. I just, I feel like uh, we can do better than have to run those experiments. And even if it's hard, like, I, I, I don't know what to say. Um, yeah, I mean, if I knew the answer, like, or, you know, if anybody knew the answer, um, we're just, we're going to have to figure it out. But like, I think, yeah, the first step is like, and I'm, you know, I know we're going to be hearing about it forever, but postmortem. Like what the fuck happened? How do how do we prevent this in the future? Like, what you know? What were the failure points? The downside is that the you know more insurrectionists will be asking themselves those exact questions and looking for uh you know from the other angle. Maybe you know, like have a plan. How, how can we fail? What can we do anymore? to do better in the future? <laughs> uh, well, maybe I don't know. Like it again, sort of seemed like this is just like flailing in anger. I don't even know if they had a like. You know, it, it sounded like it's okay. We're gonna like take the White House, and then like then we're gonna dot dot dot. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> that's, 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 <laughs> like that, that's partly why I've been gravitating more towards the use of the word mob than terrorist. Because like, granted, like I said, a uh, handful, no doubt, unequivocal terrorists, and yet like most of this was just mob mentality. I don't know if terrorists you know, anyone... really perfect. Come with like they they just wanted to like stir shit up. Right. This, I think I think a small group of people definitely did. And like the rest of them wanted to be there to protest. And then they see, oh, look, the, the barriers are down. Whoa, look, you can just walk right into the building. Why not? I'm near the front of the line. Like, I, I think and that that I'm, I'm assuming that's one through the head because that's how they acted when they got in there. Right. They did not know like very few people, very few people entered that building looking like they had a plan. And so it makes me think that this was not a, uh, a coordinated thing. Exactly. Yeah. So that, that's where I just see it like as a mob thing where it's like, oh, look, I didn't know this door was unlocked. Hey, check this out. And then everyone else, you know, they had no intention maybe at the beginning of going through this door. And they, the, I know the doors weren't unlocked. I'm now inventing a bad hypothetical when I could just point into the real thing. But like, <laughs> oh, look, this door's been kicked in. How convenient. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So you get one, you get a handful of disgruntled dick bags at the front of the line. And of course, the ones who are most disgruntled will be closer to the front in the first place. And then people saw them walk in, no problem. And I, I, I would be, I'd be willing to bet a thousand dollars that a handful of people just walked in wondering, I wonder what it looks like in there. Like, I guess looks like going looks this way. Going in consequence free. I'm curious. I don't even know if that winch was going through people's heads, honestly. Like, you get like tunnel vision. Like, you know, the people are riled up and they were like, I, I'm so here's, here's the thing. Thing, actually, of like, it, if I was at a protest, like, assuming I'm just putting myself personally in the shoes, like, if I was upset at the president and I was, or at the Congress, and I was at the Capitol building, just, you know, protesting, holding my sign, and some people rushed the Capitol building, I'm not going to rush it. I'm not a violent maniac. I'm going to stay back. But, like, if it's been an hour and a half and there's people milling in and out of the Capitol building and nothing's going on, I'm going to be like, uh, you know what? I I'm going to go in there. I'm just going to look around. I always wanted to see the inside of the Capitol building. Like, right. why not? Maybe take a few pictures? Because they're not going to be that lucid, though. Like, this is, like, people getting really riled up and, like... The initial people, yeah. But, like, when you see the video of After an Hour, people just wandering yeah. around, I could totally see myself being in there and being like, all right, well, the door's kicked in. <laughs> what, what? That was kind of a weird... Yeah, yeah the, the cat's out of the bag. The horses have left the barn. I'm just going to check out the barn while it's, while it's open. Yeah, I've never been to a, a real, like, protest. I, I did the... The initial, the first year, the the women's march after Trump got elected, and like I, I didn't attend any of the, uh, the the protests this summer, and part of me felt bad about that because like I had friends who were going, and uh, I supported the efforts. I just I I mean, really, what it contends is I don't want to get hurt, and I realized that like part of that is like you should be willing to get hurt for the cause, etc. But like I knew that like one good kick and I'd be limping for the rest of my life. Like I, I'm more fragile than maybe the average protester, and I didn't want to. Like, I mean, 
so I, I guess what I'm saying is I don't know what it's like to be part of a a, a protest where we're all like chanting and holding signs because I've never done that. Uh, maybe it is Mob just kind of like, is a thing. You can just get totally swept up in it. Right. So that's what I'm saying is I, I can't imagine what it would be like to be swept up that way. So maybe I'm not doing it right when I'm pitching my hypotheticals here. I've only had like good examples of this, like being a, you know, an awesome rave <laughs> and having people spontaneously like do cool shit. But I can very easily, having had those experiences, I can very easily imagine having the other experience. And I imagine it would feel kind of similar. Like it's this heady feeling, this like sort of, yeah, I'm invincible. Like we can do anything. Oh my God, this is great. But like flipped. <laughs> dark version hmm. and you know raising the sanity waterline we, we need to probably like give some lip service to that more than lip service if we can think of a way to actually do it would be great <laughs> um i i don't know man i uh i think that my i, don't, I feel like i'm about spent on things to say i, I don't know what else to i feel like I, i've gotten everything out that i wanted to get out uh, yeah i think i'm the same place I mean, I, I'm sure glad nobody died. And I, I include, you know, they, I mean, they went in there and they, they erected a gallows and they talked about killing Mike Pence. Like, I'm glad they didn't kill him. Oh, like, so you're glad no politicians died. Right. Excuse me. Yes. I, I know that uh, that uh, civilians and officers died. I meant, yeah, I'm glad no politicians died, even the ones I disagree with. I'm glad they failed to lynch uh, Mike Pence. Like, I, uh, I, I, I think that would have been a catastrophe. Um, so I'm to see what yeah, the I, math is going to be. I, I don't like Mike Pence. I'm, I I wish he wasn't vice president. But if if a mob could run in there and kill the vice president, you know, to them they can do it to us, and I don't want that to happen, right? So for thinking it in them bad, us good terms, you do, I think you still don't want this to ha still don't want that to happen. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, I don't know. I feel like I keep talking about it, but I also don't feel like it's terribly productive to do so. Yeah, I don't know. I. Because there's just I guess it's just something we had to get out. Yeah. yeah. Like originally we had a different uh, episode planned, and then this happened. Do you guys remember the last time we had a different episode planned, and it got preempted by uh, events? Mm, no. It was when Trump won the election in 2016. Lol. Yeah. So both both times have been due to Trump political stuff. God damn it, Trump! Stop derailing us. <laughs> Let's let's try and find some positive notes to end on here that probably aren't related to January sixth. Uh, I already I already tried to open on a positive note um, with saying what good things are happening, but somebody, anyone have any like random good news? Yeah, uh, we were talking about the vaccine earlier. I don't know if that's going to be kept in or not, but uh, I did look further into it, and so yeah, winter is going to be healthcare workers and people seventy older. Uh, but then the spring phase is going to be the sixty to sixty nine and sixteen to fifty nine. Uh, summer is going to be open for the general public. Uh, that is yeah, the that was uh, Colorado, that's in Colorado. Yeah, uh, vaccine information, but like it's coming. We're we're going to have the yeah, ability, you know, assuming that we can trust that the manufacturing is going to continue to you know create. We really the product, need to scale the product. Yeah, scale it up. Um, by summer, sounds like uh, you know, all us regular folks who aren't in the high risk. I mean, uh, and then. I, I don't know. I'm talking to a bunch of listeners who might actually be in that category. So <laughs> sorry to assume that we're all young 30 somethings. <laughs> well, although I think that's yeah, I mean, largely our demographics. At, at the current rate, we're not going to hit the, you know, we're not going to get to everybody by the end of this decade. Like, we, we definitely need to up production and distribution. The more and... people get it, the more herd immunity is going to be a thing. And like, I'm just looking forward to being able to see other humans again and yes. walk around. Yeah, by 2024, we should be able to stop wear masks. Fear of touching something. Or... <laughs> and, and Biden has said that he's going to try to get 100 vaccines in 100 days in his first 100 days. So 100,000. Or hundred wait, hundred million, excuse me. Right? That's what I meant to say. Yes, hundred million <laughs> in the first hundred days. <laughs> hundred million huh? vaccines is is fifty million people. Um, it's worth I, making a point. A good chunk of people. I believe we are going uh, pivoting to the everyone gets one vaccine shot first thing. Oh, well, Since that seems to be the vast majority of the protection anyway, and the booster shot is just kind of a little bonus. You know what? Okay, yeah. For science based medicine, and by God, I mean scientists. Yes. Like, <laughs> The yeah, only true goodness. God. We we didn't, you know. Again, like I'm, I'm glad that the pandemic we got wasn't as wasn't the, the worst pandemic we could have gotten by a long shot, and that now uh, people are going to take things more seriously, like science based. Like we almost did 
you know, after the Ebola quote unquote oh, pandemic. But then it became a meme. <laughs> well, yeah, but but we had we had, we'd put things in order to be prepared and, and have a proper response, which were then immediately disbanded when dipshits came in and had the ability to do so. So I like, like one of I'm hoping that we I'm hoping that we take a, a a positive you know move from this as well and and uh, can the lesson from both of these be like maybe listen to like intelligent experts who warn you about like potential catastrophes and like uh, I'm not going to back into my frustration back to happiness who else has happy <laughs> no, no I was going to say that all sounds like fine <laughs> until we all disagree on who the the trusted experts are but. <laughs> The, path, the scientific method, uh, at least, like, I don't know. Uh, pandemic is one of the things, you know, that, like, could could be an X risk. Um, yeah. And I, you know, definitely talked about pandemics before. I don't know. I'm, like, a weird nerd kid. I liked reading books about pandemics and virology. And, but, like, it was always just this, like, you know, potential extinction event. And I would, like, talk about it, you know, like, being in the medical field and stuff. And people just, like, didn't take it seriously. It's, like... After we did start getting good healthcare and sanitation, uh, germ theory of disease, et cetera, people seem to think that like, oh, okay, well, we're, you know, we as a species are past this like whole disease thing. And it's like, yeah, no, <laughs> y'all don't remember a few generations ago, like, yeah, and really it wasn't, it wasn't that long ago, you know, um, how many like children died in childbirth, like women dying in childbirth, like, it, you know there were diseases that would really mess you up. A lot of people had childhood diseases that even if they didn't kill you, left permanent scars and neurological things. Like just, you know. We're still on the up and up. Polio was eradicated last year in uh, Africa, right? Uh, let me see. I thought so. At least I've been telling people that, and I hope I'm right, because I thought I heard it somewhere trustworthy. Uh, I, I think you're think right. you're right in that uh, wild yeah. polio, yeah. Africa yeah. is free from wild polio virus, says the who. So yeah, positive There's, stuff, right? As a yeah, I think it's project. just like Af Afghanistan and Pakistan where it's left now. Yep. Yeah. One of my coworkers uh, got a hold of a PS5 um, as far as Yay. just like random, <laughs> random happiness. He, he really wanted one, so he wrote a Twitter bot that would monitor Twitter for like the word sale uh, or, you know, PS5 sale or, or whatever. And then it would ping his phone only when that came up and then he could go check it out and uh that's smart get, get there immediately yeah i, I think it took him large purchases more yeah i mean it, uh, it certainly uh i could send you the code for his uh his ps5 oh. hunting bot i mean um, I, i'd appreciate it I, I like know how to do it what i'm just saying is i should stop being lazy and start like <laughs> yeah i'm finding the virtue of just like looking for like when you're looking at making purchases to look on different platforms it was funny i bought youtube premium like for the month free trial a month ago and if i looked at buying it on my phone it was like 17 bucks a month right so when i went to my computer and said all right youtube premium promo code i it just took me right to the regular page but it was 14 bucks a month and i i checked and for whatever reason if you're buying it on your phone it's three dollars more a month than if you buy it on your computer and i have no idea why the fuck that is i was looking at buying a nice office chair that i just saw on shark tank and if i look at it on my computer it's a hundred dollars more than if i buy it on my phone because my phone has like a pre-order hundred dollars off what the so fuck? I don't. I, that actually is why I didn't pull the trigger on buying that yet because I'm like, this seems so disingenuous. Screw you guys. <laughs> but um, it does have a sixty day money back guarantee, so I'll probably get it. But like, I it anyway. If you're shopping, look look on different for whatever reason, different uh, hardware to see if you can get different prices. <laughs> that is bizarre. All right, who else has something positive? I don't have something positive, but I have like a listener feedback thing from earlier. Hit it. We'll end on that. Okay, uh, so this is back from when we did the Einstein's Arrogance Less Wrong post. Uh, one of the posters in our Discord was wondering, like, why why is this okay for Einstein to, like, say, no matter what the experimental result is, I feel bad for the person doing the experimental result if it doesn't match the theory. Like, that really does seem the opposite of how we want to do science, where we always go with what the experiment reveals. And... Uh, there was some discussion about this because, you know, it sounds like a good objection. Uh, eventually, our user do the math gave uh, the answer. He said, Einstein had a mathematical proof that if the speed of light was constant for all observers, something which can be proven using Maxwell's equations and verified by just looking at every experiment done on the matter, then the only possible world we could live in is one with time dilation. If he was wrong, then not only would he be wrong, but ZFC set theory would also be proven wrong. And we would no longer be able to make predictions about the world because the world wouldn't have a logical structure. <laughs> well, that 
or every experiment we did to try to change the speed of light would have yielded spurious results, and Maxwell's equations would be wrong in a way which would allow us to change fundamental constants of the universe and generate free energy. <sighs> Too bad we're not <laughs> living in that universe. Yeah. So the That's difference awesome. here is that there's more than one logical step between Maxwell's equations and relativity, so people can't realize how absurd it is to get a result proving the theory wrong. Did, uh, I hear you write that the post view is named to do the math. Yes. And, and they said, because because math. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what I love about that That's is I was, like, two things. One, I was there for the, the beginning of that conversation, and I was able to, like, respond a little bit, and I was like, we're going to need a mathematician to come in here and settle this. And I missed the mathematician coming in to settle this. So thank you, do the math. Uh, and thank you, Inyash, for bringing it to my attention because I didn't didn't get to see the the wrap up on that. Uh, yeah, and but that's one of those things too, where it's like the the summary in the post wasn't given. Like your your succinct there explanation would have been, I think, duly included in that less wrong post to explain why it wasn't arrogant. Um, just saying he had good reasons, and we can trust that they were good reasons. Um, definitely left to open a very legitimate question of like, how is that not the most arrogant thing anyone's ever said ever? So, um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Speaking of less wrong posts next month or next week or next, next fortnight, we are doing, um, hold up a minute. I almost had it. We are we doing, announced, so. well, I guess we can announce. I that. know, but just to remind yeah. people, right. we're doing a rational okay. argument. We change our minds less often than often than we think and avoiding your beliefs, real weak points. Yes. And, uh, and with that, Wait. Everyone stay safe, have fun. Wait, what were you going to say? We got to thank a patron, right? Oh my god. Do I save in the day. It was such a like politically charged <laughs> episode today. Do we want to like <laughs> lay this on a patron's feet or yes. Should we something like Okay, all right. The people that listen to this podcast are, like have the same interests or at least I don't know, like Hobo Demon, we couldn't have done this without you. <laughs> 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 Hobo Demon is also on the Discord, and I hope we'll enjoy the, the call out on this episode. So, um, yeah. you totally fucking rock. And uh, it's always, I, I, I enjoy, you know, I, I don't engage much with, with much that happens on Discord, but I do watch some of it. So, it's nice uh, seeing your, your contributions as well. So, yeah, I'd like yeah. to give extra props to Hobo Demon real quick because Hobo Demon was one of the people that helped together the uh, audiobook for my book, um, What Lies Dreaming. Yeah, which and it was great. Hopefully, that'll be in, you know, available in its entirety soon but it is available in all the different chapters currently and yeah uh, that like he just did it free out of the goodness of his heart and i really appreciate yeah, it so thank you for enjoying that thanks over demon i think what we're getting at is we definitely owe you one we owe you at least one probably two so um whatever you need whatever you'd like give us a shout it's yours <laughs> Grant me one wish <laughs> <laughs> one possibly two wishes depending on how how intense the first wish is but none um, of those wishes can be for us to teach defense against the dark arts next year. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, by all means, please reach out. We owe you and you rock. And with that, I think we can call it. Uh, yeah. Let's quickly remind people that they can subscribe to us on all the various podcasting places. Please give us a review. If you haven't, you can support us on Patreon. And if you don't want to support us, weekly on patreon you can't just buy some neat merch to wear around or to put on your phone or you know whatever we have a merch store with uh our logo on it i did buy the the slim phone case and it's awesome um Sweet. not only does it look good but it's minimalistic like it, it's i don't know how thick it is like less than half a centimeter and it adds no bulk to my phone like my, my old case had like a kickstand on it that I never used and it was like big this thing is is sleek and sharp and I know I'm like sounding like I'm selling it, but I I I bought one, so like I think it's cool. I gotta see if there's one that fits my phone. I've got a weird phone, but it's there was a variety of options, but I don't think it had a ton. Yeah, so. I've got um, what the fuck is it? A Moto bullshit phone. Yeah, probably that I don't have it, but yeah, there's like stickers, right? Stuff. Yeah, I can just put a sticker. There, there are. All right. All right. All right. Good point. Good point, Tinyash. All right. Everyone have fun. Have a safe couple of weeks. and Enjoy watching some, the aftermath of this thing. <laughs> and do something fun. Yeah. Um, Watch some I, I, videos. I, there, there's, a, there's a Netflix show called The History of Swear Words, hosted by the greatest actor to ever grace the screen, Nicolas Cage. And the first episode was on the, on the history of the word fuck. And it was delightful. Oh, that so, sounds really good. Yeah. I, I watched, I've only seen the first episode, but I was looking for some levity this week and found that. And I was like, this is what my life needed today. Send that, that to me. I'll send you some puppy videos. I found some real good puppies. This is just on Netflix, the oh. history of Star Wars. Okay, then I'll have yeah, to check that. It'll be available to everybody, or anyone with Netflix anyway. <laughs> All right, everyone, have fun. See you in a couple weeks. Bye. Bye. Bye.